Here we go. So last time you guys were left off um, in wagons just a mile outside of North Rose when you guys realized that Six Rocks soldiers started investigating 12 caravans waiting to enter the city's surroundings. Um, as you guys went previously before that, you guys basically ended up uh, meeting in Stonebridge, met a small family known as Pike and his father, got some intel, left Stonebridge, and on the way have basically found yourselves in your traversing seeing rock soldiers make your passage alongside over the next coming miles. After a while, you come just outside of North Rose where there's like a section. As you guys are kind of looking around, you see that there's huge rock, almost mountain hillsides on each side of you. As they've gone through, you had just witnessed a man being pulled out of a caravan, a bunch of tarps being basically drawn aside, him being pulled out and stabbed and killed to death. Well, killed that's what death. happens. He's you killed, killed to death. death. He's to killed death. to death. Yep. So, so Avengers is like, what if I die? That's what At this you moment, yes. oh boys. So, I didn't have time to get all of them. I painted a bunch of stuff. These are what the rock soldiers look like. So, you've seen them now. I thought they used like orange and yellow or some shit. No, they're gold and yellow with some orange. But these are what these guys look like. So, as you guys look and you see three off of their horses, and you see three lined back here. And we'll go with uh, Wayne Wayne. These guys are on horseback. As you see these, so what do you guys want to do? Window? Wait, oh, there's dudes up there? Okay. Man, if I was a mid maxer, I would have taken like the illusion spell. The level 2 illusion spell. Love those. Well, I'm, I mean, if we're gonna just fucking ride this out, I don't want to. Okay, what's in the carriage? Give me some like visualizations. What's in the entire right. Basically, not much. Pug. Is with you. Mm -hmm. You guys have two horses in front. Mm -hmm. Most of the caravans each have either one or two horses. Mm -hmm. They're all about the same size. It's kind of got a tarp around mm -hmm. and it's pretty tight. You guys honestly just have a basic caravan. There's um, one row of seating in the front where you see Pug and I think it was you in the front. So you guys are actually outside kind of visualizing some of this. The rest of you are in the back. Okay, uh, I'm gonna uh, cast Enhance Ability on Jake. So here, we'll, we'll kind of set everybody up around here. And then we'll say that you guys are actually in the caravan. And you as well, you're in the caravan. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna cast Enhance Ability on Jake, and I'm gonna uh, do Charisma. And so you have advantage on all Charisma checks. So Persuasion, Deception, so on and so forth. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to fucking turn into an animal. Probably like a cat, maybe a dog, something like that. Yeah, so this is the back here? Yeah, right? front, city, okay. stone wall, big yeah, hillside, yeah. and that's where you guys just came from. You guys have kind of came through like this narrow passageway, and you guys are kind of like, I don't want to say like locked in, but you, you, you know, you gotta gotta go the forward or backward almost. You're in this passageway towards this city. Hey Connor, real quick, what's your Wi-Fi? Which one do I get? Uh is it the direct 92? Oh I got it. She I have no idea. It's been so long. It's this one. You space hamster? Thank you. <laughs> Alright, so what are you guys doing? I mean, I already did what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn into, uh, I think I'm gonna turn into uh, a fucking a weasel. Why not? A weasel. A yeah. weasel. I'm turn into a weasel. All right. And uh, then I'm pro. Is there like a gap in the front so that way I can? There's, there's a slight slit in the front and in the back. Okay. I'd like to crawl through the slit so that way I'm up near Perrin. All right. So you kind of weasel your way on forward. Pug, right. he kind of turns. Oh, you can tell he's very uneasy. What are, we, what are we gonna do? We're kind of trapped in. A lot of these caravans have us to the left and to the right. If 
we are going to move forward, we're going to need to figure out a way. What if they know what we look for? They said five. They obviously don't know that Estro's not with us. <sighs> what, are, what are we going to do? I think we can talk our way out of this. Yeah, um... Or excuse me, they said six. six. Yes. Five. Sorry. Well, technically we're down four now. He just turned into a weasel and he's in my lap, so they're not I'm, looking for a weasel. I should, I should clarify, I'm a regular weasel. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not a mechanical weasel. Right, gotcha. Yes. I didn't think you got to choose. I thought it was right. No, I asked him specifically for situations like this. Can I turn into regular animals? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yes, I'm not a fucking idiot. Well, yeah, I'm weird. not a fucking idiot. I, I'm, I, so, I saw this issue coming forth. So metal by default. Yes. yes. What's, so, what's your character's name again, Brian? Or, or, or small enough to not. So be that I look at Orum real quick and it's like, just play as my pet for right now till we get through this. Chip chip. Weasel noises. Chip, chip. <laughs> chip, chip. What about the undead guy? And we also have a dragon ball. He also he got a new mask and they're not gonna expect that. So he has a born birth deformity. If he shows it, it's just it'll be gross and nasty. But we can get through this. Dragonborn just got caught. No, what? Fuck you. I'm not okay. I the cast. Gym. I cast Alter Self. Okay. And I now look like I well, I'm an elf, I'm an elder. Okay. And I look like I did before I was a skeleton. Oh, okay. See that? We got that works. Oh, so you kind of revert back to pre-event of what happened. Yeah. And I look just awful. Like I haven't slept. Tired. Huh? I'm fucking <laughs> plus cool. Strung out. Yeah. 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 Hey, he looks like a I look a, a little bit like a method. Just a little bit. Fantastic. <laughs> Alright, and him? What are you going to do with the gem? Oh boy. Just, just gonna keep it in my bag. Don't pull it out. Well. You can I'm not. I'm gonna try not to. <laughs> Wait a minute, what? <laughs> At this point. <laughs> good, good. You, you Wait, see what? that they have moved up. <laughs> And they move I mean, to another caravan. Is it an option? <coughs> right, Pug, keep our story straight. We're a, tra we're, we're a caravan of circus people. We're circus people. We're circus people. What's our names? What entertainers? We can't give our real names. Why are we entertainers? Just hold You see shit. them in the caravan in front of you. They just pull it open. mercenaries. Just <laughs> chill. You see in front of you, there seems to be just <laughs> one person. Stop making a fucking story. And a bunch of what looks to be pickaxes, shovels. What seems to be going on here? The tradesman just <laughs> waves his hand. Oh, just bringing it into the city. Kind of looks him over. You see the soldier, he kind of rummages through everything and then closes the drapes. All right, we're going on to the next one. You see the three soldiers, they turn. They're about to go to your row. As they do so, <coughs> you see one soldier go to each. The one that approaches yours has a crossbow with a long sword. You see also something behind his cloak and an arraignment of tools on his belt. As you guys look at him, he walks his way forward as he makes his... Thank you, by the way. He turns, he makes his way past your horses. He looks up. So! Uh, he kind of looks about your caravan. He seems to be traveling with you. Where do you seem to be headed? Well, hello! Is it, what, day, what time it is it? It's about middle of the afternoon. Middle afternoon to you, sir. How are you this fine, fine day? Oh, I'm looking for a group of people, and I'd be uh, a lot better if I found them. Oh, miscreants. Uh, what have they done? If you don't mind my asking. Um, let's just say they've wronged the wrong people. Oh, that's terrible news. Well, I hope you do catch them. Yes. Well, but, uh, besides the point, why have you come? Oh, yes, sorry, sorry, uh, I get lost in conversation. Uh, this is my friend Jefferson here, and uh, I'm like, man. You see Puggy gun. Slight wave. He's not much of a talker, and uh, he's, uh, he's a shy, you know, he's kind of a bit of a hermit. I had to drag yes, him. Yes, yes, yes. Why are you here? We're here because we have been hunting the goblins, that have been attacking this area. We we're we're a band of mercenaries, if you will, sir. Mercenaries? What's the name of uh, what's the name of your your group a group of mercenaries of what just two of you with a weasel? Yes. Oh, and this is uh, Puffles right here. My weasel. Oh, he's a adorable little guy. Puffles, an old man. You and a bow and Puffles, the weasel. Yes, yes. I'm an adorable little guy. I got him back from a trader from two towns back. Hmm. What town was that? We're back here. Huh? Oh, 
Hang on, what town was that? Oh, the town. Oh, god damn it. I'm still trying to. Oh, we're new still to Geo. We're still learning the land and. He's looking very suspicious now. <clears throat> Give me a deception check. Deception, okay. Because <laughs> uh, you still need to give me a name of that town. <laughs> ah, yeah, there we go. Oh, that was my thing. Shit, ow. Alright. Ooh, okay, that's not bad. That's not bad. Deception, what's that for? Charisma. So, uh, 15 flat. That looks at you. Mm. Oh, yes, I remember now. It wasn't too back, right, Jefferson? No, it was... You ever heard of a place called Stonebridge? You ever been? Um, I just came from there. Hmm. Beautiful place. Uh, that bridge, though, well, quite scary when you look at it. So you're carrying any contraband? Oh, no, just simple weapons and armor, you know, to kill those green little bastards. Hmm, I see. Well, he starts making his way towards the back of the caravan. As he does so, you guys... In the back, hear him making his way. You guys do anything? You want to do anything? <laughs> <that? laughs> I mean, do I have a hood? Do you? If I'm wearing armor, I don't think I'm wearing any kind of. Like, you got like a cape? You got cape? Yeah, remember, yeah, we'll step with your You definitely have like a cowl on the other cape. Because remember, I remember we wrapped up those clothes <laughs> and we, that, we wrapped it around his head. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right, yeah. <laughs> okay, then I'm good. So I don't have to like. No, no, you're you good. Have somewhat of a disguise. Though. Somewhat of a disguise. Yeah. You have something. That's right. That's right. That's right. All right. So you hear the footsteps, and as he he makes his way, and you see he there's two more in here. Hey, so who are you two? You part of this mercenaries group? Nope. Yep. Why the hell are you in the back of the caravan then? You prisoners. I came from the the trail. <laughs> oh, we're what? dead! Give we're dead! We're so fucking you dead! See, you what see, happened? Just, like, <laughs> that's where we just came from. What happened? <laughs> I mean, I mean, Jake, Jake is always like on the ball. But you are like, part of the group. He's he 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 intelligent, he dog. He's he intelligent. He's doing it perfectly. He is. Fuck! He is. I built his own another wrecking ball to kill us. He is. No, oh, my least Came Cyrus, from please. which trail? The mountain pass. Mm -hmm. Okay, you said deception. Yeah. Oh, that's a natural 20. <laughs> and it's plus an enhanced ability. Yeah. Oh, so fuck, thank he God. looks. Oh! Through the mountain pass! Oh, yes. Oh, shit. I. I have seen many travel through that way. It's a little bit longer, but. And what about you? Uh, who are you? And what is your names? I'm Fuck This, Shit I'm Out. Hmm. <laughs> And yours? I'm Gildor. If he's dumb. If he's not. going for it, I'm just like, it's too late. He he they know they already said know. You, and he just sits here for a moment. Alright then. And, uh... You can kind of see he somewhat shifts in this moment. He takes a slight step back from the <coughs> caravan. So where are you guys headed? Into Northros or passing through? Um. Well, we are in. Wait. No. Oh, are, you, oh, are you talking to him or are you talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking to him. Oh, not you're talking you. to him. No, okay, not you. Sorry. Yeah, this guy's fucking back. He yeah, okay, okay, back okay, there. Okay, okay, okay. We're passing through. Mm. Just you and your group. And what was your group's name again? I, no, because I don't know what he said, so like I, I don't want to compromise the story. I mean, it's just a piece of like thin fabric, right? Could they yeah. not have heard the entire fucking conversation? I mean, you guys, he, he's not yelling. I mean, there's other conversations going yeah. on. You guys can just hear, you know, talking, maybe make out some words here and there. So you need not answer? No, I don't got anything. Okay. So, the all right, then he seems to not want to be talking yeah, now. You notice we also told he, he I starts. Him, so. I call back this. Oh, well, you have to forgive him. He's uh, he not much of a talker either. So it's making his way through. He says, mm, mm -hmm. One moment. Did you want to know our name? You never did wait for me to no, tell you. No, one, one moment. He turns and 
in this moment, he starts making his way towards the other caravan. As you see, he says, I'll be right back. As you see, he starts... Oh, this is bad. We are, we are fucked. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> you see, you're gonna help with that. These guys start moving up to this next group. Because they're just bad. As they do so, you see suck, these two it. move. Now, give me a perception check. You're the only one outside. <clears throat> Uh, you can too, you're out, but give me a cool. disadvantage. Mm. Okay. Uh, is it because he's super short? Yeah, it's just the vantage point. Because he's on the other uh, side. Oh, he's also a weasel. Yeah. Well, it's not necessarily that, it's just on the <laughs> other side of Pug. Why? Oh, this shit! Could, you roll? This can't get any worse. <laughs> Trash. This can't get any worse. It's, a, it's, it's, it's like a nat that. one. This can't, nat get, one. This can't <laughs> get any worse. So, I did slightly. Oh! Oh, hold on. I did slightly better. Uh, just fucking two plus six, eight. I think. So you see just the soldiers moving around. About two minutes go by, Fuck. and you see not only one soldier, but it seems like two or three. And as these start approaching, oh, are those still on horseback? Yes. You see this one give a certain motion. You see certain hand signals now starting to start happening throughout the party. They're not talking, you just see motions. As you see this one kind of make his way back, and then this one, they start swinging around. Almost in Fuck. a certain pattern. You see the one that you were speaking with before, he comes up and he puts his hand on your horse and then he takes out a knife and he cuts both the horses off from your caravan and they start running away. Oh, fantastic. Alright. <clears throat> so, you notice that most of the other caravans slowly start making their way forward, leaving the, I'd say, immediate premise. As they do so, about 30 seconds go by, a little bit of dust starts trailing as you see this man, whoop, as I deleted the whole map. Enter the whole fucking void we go! As you look, you see, and as he stares into you, so... I didn't think you guys would be that stupid, but... I'm just gonna tell you that two of them gave the names that we were exactly looking for. And they matched part of the description. Really? You almost had us with the number. We were not expecting one of the lapidaries of the town, and he kind of looks at Pug, and Pug kind of hangs up his head. We didn't think that um, you'd be stupid enough, Pug. You know that uh, the family's been hunting for these gems for quite some time now. You see, Pug, he just kind of turns and looks right at you, Perrin. Under his breath, he says, What are we going to do? They have us surrounded. He turns and looks. Now. Do not be stupid. Get out of the caravan, everyone. Drop your weapons. We do not want this to get messy. Well, I see that guy's by the balls on this one. Pug just looks at you and he kind of just puts up his hands. He takes his sword and he kind of just drops it off the side of the caravan. Oh, I think Pug's got the right idea on this one. I think we're going to... Oh my god, we can't. We can't just hand ourselves in. The best way to get in is to get caught and then break out. Yes, yes. Because you two fucked it up! And the wizard <laughs> is fucking you spells without his staff. It's a Who great idea. It? How's that my fault? You decided that, oh, it's Gildor! You're like a genius undead over here. Uh, he already said, fuck this. We were already going to be stopped. He's a fucking dragonborn! That's his problem! <laughs> What we were already boned. Get it? I'm a skeleton. Yeah, great. Ha ha fucking asshole. <laughs> chip chip. Chip chip. Okay, so. Fuck this. You need to, like, break the top of this caravan. Let's just start murdering these fucks. Fire. I was, I was, I was thinking about fire. Bring fucking fire. That could backfire real bad. It could backfire, but you would do that. You guys are in the back. You guys just <laughs> see what looks to be like a, a, a humanoid, half elven man, as well to the right, what looks to be a full, just normal human. Both of them, one with a shield and a sword, the other with what looks to be 
uh, I'd say a very shifty like makeup. You don't see any large weapons in his hands, but very well put together. Which one of those? The two in the back? Yep, this one's on horseback. This one's not. The, the ones that are painted are not on horseback. The ones that are uh, the random painted. Now, do are, we know what? Do that you know they're out there? That this guy, there's a guy right here? Yeah. Okay. You know, you can so, hear them. Like, so let's take the guy on the horse just out completely. Run the horse? Yeah, that's one. That one's on the horse? Yeah. Yeah. Alright, wait, which one's on the horse? The one on the The white one. This one is. Yep. Yeah, I just need you to like jump and slash that bitch with your yeah. spines. Just kill the fucking horse. Just fucking <laughs> tackle it. Yep. Nah, nah, the horse being alive and this dude being mega dead is way scary. At this moment, you see Puggy kind of looks over his shoulder and kind of pulls the tarp, peering back to see what's happening. As he looks back, what are you guys doing? If you're acting, act now. I'm like, holding. I'll give you guys one surprise action. If you guys want to combo it at the same time, I'll allow it. Just know that if you guys start, this will this will go. I'm <laughs> holding a mind sliver on this guy once he hits them. What, what are you hitting him with? You jumping out? You gotta you gotta jump out and make about ten feet. Yeah. Um. And you gotta be quick. He's on a horseback. So he's about one feet up, or eight feet up. Or you could breathe fire on him and his horse. <laughs> That's horrible. That's a cone. There's a cone right there. Fuck the cone. I know. Ugh. Well, I know. If, Wait, we're, if we're doing this, put him in a do it. Put him in that box. Going in this. Box. Going in this. Would he hit both? Put of him in that box. Mm. Pussy foot. Wait, no, not you, not you. The the enemy. Put him in the actual box. He's on a. Oh, oh, I see. What oh, you, I see. I thought you made yeah, it in like yeah. this. Yeah, you're good. You're good. All right, what are you guys doing? Do you want the timer? Are you in a second? Do We're doing it. So if, I'm yeah, I can hit him both. Plus, with green fire, I believe so. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go fire ahead. Friends. You doing it? Yeah, you doing it. Plus, I'm gonna tackle this guy to my right. Okay. Or you just shoot him with your bow. What are you doing? I don't think I have time what to pull doing? my bow out. Um. The guy on your right. I was gonna jump. So this will trigger first. Yeah, I know. you guys don't really know what's going on, but then at that, you guys will kick in. Right. You're just inferring what we're gonna do. Yeah, How, yeah. Um, yeah, the fact that they're so I have time to grab a bow and like jump to shoot an arrow. We'll see. I don't okay, think I do. Gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna make him. Okay, so you All jump right. it out. Yeah. yeah. Give me an athletics check. Wait, my mind sliver goes. The athletics or acrobatics? Jump, jump out, okay. make your way towards him, okay. and then leap up. And hit him. Are you breathing fire or are you hit him? Yeah. Oh, you're breathing oh, fire. Oh, you're breathing fire. Yeah, I'm breathing fire. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. I thought so, you meant I had to jump out to breathe nope, fire. Nope, you're good. Nope, you're good. You can peer it up. It's yeah, all right. Yeah, I was going to my mind sliver goes. And that's all right, so at this time, you guys are guy. wham. So at this point, oh, I need my dice. Need so you need an intelligence save for me and a dex save from him. Oh, God, I got to get this open. You're breathing fire, right? I'm not tripping. Yeah, he's breathing fire. So what's that, like 2d6 plus your con? Oh, yeah. What do you need? 2d10. 2d10 plus your con. Ooh, Jesus. that's good. I say, what do you need? Wait, I might have that wrong. It's probably 1d10. Because it's, it's definitely what, a what d10, you, what's but this might be What's the one. save? For me, it's 15. Of of what? Intelligence? Intelligence. Fail. Oh, okay, so he takes this, and he's uh, minus d4 on his next saving throw. Okay. What, what is it? Uh, Excuse I did two damage. He's minus a d4. Alright, I, I, I roll three, so you want to take that? Yeah. Take yep, it. cool. He's minus three. Alright, so you the fire, wham. The fire yep, and he's firing, so two, Do you I have pull to back to tarp. I'm sorry. No, they, they it's, a save, it's, it's a save. save. Okay. It's a save. It should be eight plus your con plus your proficiency. Uh, it failed, it failed, it failed. Okay. So you, you pull back the drape, at this time he, you, and as it rips through, can he hit both? Yeah. Roll for both. Oh, uh, yeah. The, Rogue One made it. Really? Yes. And he probably has uncanny or some shit, so he's fine. Is he not he prone, him. or is he... Nope. He's fine. He just... Oh, did you roll for the horse? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm taking it as... Taking the damage. He yeah. can't dodge it. He's on horseback. He's the one that he already failed. The horse did? Nine. I rolled him a disadvantage, though. Okay, nine damage? Yeah. Okay, so... He takes it. 
99, okay. And he's okay. Now at this Did point, give me yeah. your guys'. So this one takes like. What are you guys doing? So you pull out, Perrin. You are jumping onto this one. So give me a athletics or acrobatics check. That is up to you. I'm gonna take acrobatics because I'm proficient. Sounds good. Um, I am going to like leap off the the front. Yep. Um, on the front still guy. as a weasel, and mid flight, I'm gonna uh, turn into a giant hyena. And try and like land on top of that guy. Okay, Just now like, both of down. you, since they both see you, I'm gonna need you guys to both roll initiative against me to see if you guys act against my initiative. I'm about uh, 18. Is what I got. I oh, nat one on the guy in front. Cool. I beat. And that. I rolled a three for the next guy, so you guys will both act ahead of me. So I'm 18 on the acrobatics. 18. And then 10 so on you. The Hmm. Quickly, you both kind of look at each other, give each other the I side just, I just eye, get a pug, a wink, and then and I'm you like... jump out, and you, boom. <laughs> now give me, do you want to actually tackle him and try and knock him prone? Yeah, I'm going to just try and see if I can knock the guy out on like good punch. Okay, give me a strength check. And this will be against mine. Oh my god, I'm rolling off. Okay, that's not bad. You're going to get it. Just take it, you're gonna knock him prone. So you just, you you peer out, you jump on him, and as you do so, you catch him off guard. He stumbles back, almost tripping it, and with the weight, you just knock him down. Bam! You're on top of him, shoulders bearing, your rear back, not attempting to hit yet, but about to. You jump off, uh, Orem, you jump onto him in your weasel form. As you do so, you kind of jump onto his shoulder. He kind of scrambles back, unable to act. I don't think that was his plan. That was not what do you want to do? What he, do you wants to, he wants to shape shift into the giant thing as he's mid form. Mid, yeah, mid air. Mid okay. like, oh, I'm so sick as fuck. Second to knock him prone. This would be his last. Yes, last this year. is your last shape. I'm okay. Yeah. So yeah. So what are you shaping into? Giant hang. Okay. So you just yeah. yeah. That's I'm fucking a, uh, sick. Okay, where's it at? Uh, I can just big receive that. That's so badass. Here, swap him right in front. Yep. So you just kind of. Peer off and you jump in mid form. He sees this tiny weasel and, and just yeah. transform and what lay in almost not back. <laughs> uh, give me an intimidation check too um, to see if that'll Maggie affect him. And then at himself. this point, everybody can roll for initiative. Do you want me to re roll initiative again? 13. Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. really? Okay. Yeah, that was just for that instance. Okay, yeah, fuck you, bro. 18. 13, 18. So the intimidation was uh, 11. Okay. The What'd initiative is six. Okay. What'd you get? Is that, with your, is that uh, Jake, 13. 21. What? Ooh. Is that with your hyenas next? Yeah. Okay, let me roll mine. Actually, no. Oh, wow. It'd be five. Dude, I have not rolled higher than a four. Get <laughs> That sucks. Wait, what's my initiative? Is there a dude here that I just can't see? Yes. So you're no, there's this like, one. Oh, no, 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 no. This area. Okay. Okay. So, at this moment, my boy, fuck this up to you. Your turn. Okay. Now I'm gonna jump out. Okay. So did you I jump actually, out. Did I actually as you do so, you <laughs> in front prone roll. No. Oh, okay. I need to roll again. No, you're good. For you can move him out. He, he might be scurrying. Knock, knock him out. That wasn't my intention. Was oh, the, what was your intimidation? The intimidation was only like twelve. No, eleven is only fine. Like you don't notice any change. He just caught off guard. Is he still on a horse? Yep. Does that give me like advantage or disadvantage or like disadvantage or anything? You don't know. On a horse? Smite his ass. Fuck. Yeah. I'm just gonna I'm gonna run up and hit him. Okay. Smite. Swing my swordy at him. Okay. Now as you run up, you notice that he starts moving his sword in a way in an almost defensive manner, bolstering his shield on one side and his sword on the other, getting ready for an attack. It was a very defensive stance. Plus seven. Nineteen to hit. That'll hit. Yes! And here comes the smart! <laughs> so you rear back and you, this is into him, right? Not the horse. What? This is into him, not the horse. Yes. And you, when you slam into him. Oh, bad. Uh, seven damage. Okay. okay. Do you have a great weapon, and then... Any smites or anything? Oh, I do, actually. Hey, so move, you can re roll. Move him one, up yeah. one more. Move this up one more. His damage yeah. is wrong. This one? For any rolls? Him. Just uh, for, yep, for your you damage. Oh, you re-roll one. Perfect. Perfect. I like. I feel like I've never. I never rolled that low. Right. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? The same thing. Wow. Really? One, one and a two. two. Yeah. That's funny. I mean, I think I can do it again, right? Uh, no. No. <laughs> I, yeah, I think you have to. I take, have to see the. You gotta take the re-roll. Something like that. Okay. Yeah. 
All right, and then seven damage. Okay. Are you smiting him? Yeah, I'll smite. All right. So it's what, another 2d10? 2d8. Man, see, Paladins, man, when they have smite, they are on stop. I'm like, oh man, you have no weapons. I got a pencil. Smite one, fucker. <laughs> Nine more damage. Okay, so you rear back and strength too. He did it on the, the initial seven. Was this is with your short time. sword, right? The, or your my uh, great sword. Great sword. Yeah, great sword. Okay, so. This is like a fuck. Yeah, two hands. Jesus Christ, we're four yeah, six so minutes into him. Whamming into him. And then the horse is this. Insane. You see him, boom, get knocked off the horse. The horse there, standing, very wounded, come with scarred. You see it buried, kind of trotting off on its way, making it off towards the left, towards the wall. One second, what does your smite look like? Because you get to choose. Is Anything it like else? a yellow flash? Is it fire? Oh, that's true. Like fire. Fire. It's fire. fire. Red. Yeah, Reddish. Works. Boom. Dragon. That's perfect. Fire. All right, anything else? So like, Blood Elf. Alright, um, no. Under you, John. Store. Hey. Alright, uh, did, did I do the punch yet or no? No. Okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and do that, because I got him prone right now. I'm pretty sure you could just hit him with your fucking sword. There you have. Yeah, if you want to. The sword would do more damage. Yeah. By like, because, like, you don't. It'd only be one plus whatever your strength is. That's true. That's how much damage that would do. Yep. One hit him. You rear back and you go and you. Whoop, and he dodges it right out of the way. Kind of thing right off his. Partial armor you see under his cloak and it penetrates right into the ground. And then you also have your movement and bonus. Wait, did you get advantage on the attack? Yes. I have? Okay, wow, that sucks. <laughs> oh, wow, that sucks. Yeah, yes, it does. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I'd say, I don't think I did No, it's not until next level. Goddamn. Alright. Yoder. I told the dead on the horseman. Hmm. Alright. It's too good of a candle. It's pretty good. I forget, how much is it at this level? Is it 2d12 if he's taking damage? We're not level 5 yet, so it's just the one. Just the 1d12? Mm -hmm. I believe so, yeah. Yeah. That's a 15 wisdom save. That's 20. Oh, rough. Fuck. Nothing happens then. That's it. Anything else? My bonus action, I drop my altar self. Alright. Arm. Oh, okay. I'm gonna make a uh, fucking uh, attack like into this guy. Bad guys are joking. He's evil. Oh, fuck. <laughs> no, it's only 11. Nope. Guy in front. Our rolls have been shit. Uh, our arm strike is, is, I think, uh, fucking 12. I, I text him every week, ask him if he wants to come. Same. It's like, come on. You miss both? Yeah. Or this our rolls me shit. All right. this roll. At this point, you see what seems to be the first squadron act. You see this man ride up on horseback. This guy signaling as he turns to you, arm. Oh, you all have messed up. We are the Rocks Riders. You do not just catch us off guard like this. He takes a stance back, and as he does so, he strikes you as he moves back. 15 feet. Upon doing so, you see a small blade <laughs> swing out. Uh, 21. To hit? Yes. Yep. And he will Does do... Does he not get an attack of opportunity? No. Interesting. Five damage. Probably okay. as disengages a bonus. And that is slashing. And then you will see him, uh, this one, coming up. As he moves, you will see him wave his hand forward in a big, white, bluish breeze. We'll go boom, and it'll slam right through the caravan in a conal form as it breezes right on through. I need everybody to give me ba 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 a constitution saving throw. Jesus fucking Christ. Six. Nineteen. <laughs> Fuck you. God damn! <laughs> did you just throw that? I out? did. I'm gonna get it back. <laughs> <laughs> You're fucking done for the night. Fuck this. <clears throat> what was it? I wrote a five. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but are you okay. proficient? <clears throat> or what? Are you like plus five? So you fail. No. What'd you roll? Wisdom, Wisdom and charisma. You pass. I failed. You failed? Fail. Oh, fail. Wisdom and charisma. Are Unless my... the DC is like Puck fails. No. Fail. Puck failed. So you guys feel this cold breeze as it. Cross through as it does so, you guys will all take seven points of damage. The passers take. Uh, you will take half that, so you'll take four. As you do so, you'll see him move forward I didn't roll my extra with health. his horse right up next to you. Five, seven. This guy, 
He will pull back shooting a bow at you, uh, Perrin. Mm -hmm. 16. Does that hit? Uh, 16 to hit? Yep. Uh, yeah. Yes? Uh, you are going to take four points of piercing damage, and then the guy in take front of you. Actual mama. And then the guy in front of you is going to swim into you with a sword. That's going to yeah. miss. That's percentile. And that's going to hit. You know, one more into you. Oh, now one did three. Three damage, John. So you took. Uh, did you get both those? What was the, the first one? Was seven, right? Yep, and then three more. And that I just is, realized we all go, and then the bad guys go. Yeah, and that was it's just one awesome. squadron. That was one squadron. So now the bad crew's going. So these three went. You see this guy? He's gonna move whoop, up in to you, Orm. As he does so, he's gonna attack. Oh, that twenty! Ooh. This is gonna be with his long that, sword. Does that make that a ten? He's gonna swing into you. Did you hit? Bum bum bum. Oh, that's a ten. That's, that's max ten. damage, dude. So I'm so ten sorry. Plus well, ten's the double sword. I'm sorry. Ten plus two. <laughs> um. So that's the gonna be twenty-four zero, slashing. Okay, what's this one? For one him. Though. One barely. Really? This guy Are you in the back. Me? Or wait a. Fucking six plus. No, I can't. This guy in the back. Into you, fuck this. He was on the ground. True. Disad uh, disadvantage. It's gonna be a three. He's gonna miss. Um, he's gonna stand up uh, before he does that, and then he is going to. Now he's gonna stay there. He's gonna put up his shield, and you see the cloak pull up around part of his arm while he uh, takes a defensive position. And then the last guy behind, he's gonna move up right in front of you with the cloak wave. Move him up next to Gildor. And then he's gonna oh, swing to you with a blade. I'm gonna use my bonus action to do the med cave. Okay. He whiffs, so he comes up and he <laughs> and both miss. What what'd you do? I had to use my med cave. Got you. To make sure I didn't get hit. Okay, so that is your one action for the whole day. Yeah, that's my react yeah, that's yep. my one time. And you have one AC until the start of your turn. <clears throat> it's right. made it two. It is. Is it two? two? Yeah. Okay. So on you fuck this. Guess I'm just gonna lay into this guy again. <laughs> we'll see. Wait, Thir what that way? Yeah, that's my bad. Right. Thirteen to hit. No. Yeah, it hits. Alright, I'm gonna- <laughs> what, what, what was the roll to hit? Like, any attack hit yet? Uh, one. His, in the beginning. Jesus. For two damage. Christ. You guys have done two damage so far, just saying. Christ! Well, well hit, he's hit him. Well, uh, right, right, but I mean, fire. aside yeah, from that his slam jam. From the fire mind slam also your it's monster. The fire. the fire, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyway. True, you're right, you guys have done one more damage, I think. Bonus right. action, I'm gonna draw the cape that I have, which gives me plus, a, plus two AC for one round. Gotcha. Right. Alright, and... Did you... Oh, you whiffed. Yeah, he whiffed. Yeah, I whiffed. On to your pair. Okay. Is the guy still prone, or...? No. No, he's not. Okay. No, he got up and swung back. Okay, cool. Um... I'm gonna take my uh, moon touch scimitar out now. Like I'm like, all right, man, let's go, bro. Yep. And I am going to swing into him. Okay. Someone give me a different d20. <laughs> <laughs> we got some. You want that was me? Give, give me a d20. Yeah, that was me last week. For sure. You're no. like plus seven to hit, aren't you? Plus seven to hit with melee? Are you a fucking high? Yeah. Don't you have a finesse weapon? Yeah, scimitar's a finesse, so you can use your. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so it would be five seven. plus two. Uh, he didn't take stat, he took sharp fear. Oh, he took sharp fear. Uh, so it's six. Yeah, Why so are we hitting six. people with swords when we get sharp fear? Because I'm fucking her next time! God, yeah. Give me a second, wait! Alright, so you miss? Yeah, it's five plus six. Alright, like anything move. else? You moving? <laughs> what do you, say? you moving? Anything else? You good? Oh, uh, okay, let's see. Alright, he's there, so... We got opportunity to attack. No, I guess I'll just stay here for right now. Alright. On to you, Gildor. I built us up! I built us up! I'm going to. <laughs> we had it, guys! We had it! Okay, 15 will save. Okay, here we go. From this guy. Uh, I think I failed that. You guys haven't told it that again. No. Yeah, I failed that. Oh, man. Okay, so he's frightened until the start of my next turn. Which one? Okay. This one right here? Yeah, this one right yep, here. Got you. And I only want like right here. I'm That's trying fine. to line up my 
frost fingers mm -hmm. to hit both these people. So that'd be a 15 con save. It's gonna, it's gonna hit him. I, I can't make it, so it just fires like this. I mean, he's in that. No, like the cone's going out like that. Like I'm making, I'm trying to line it up here. Yeah, and it's gonna Could pass he... through his block. Yeah, I would have just let it bloom. It's gonna pass through his block. I'm not gonna argue. That. What are you doing? Will be. What are you doing? A good idea. Correct. Take it, but it's too late. It's sure. too late. So frustration is happening. So that's a con save for you too. Yep. What are you doing? I'm sorry. I was. I was you were uh, making a con save. The guy in front yeah. fails, and the guy in the back, uh, 18. Nah. I didn't pass. Whatever. So the guy in the pass. back. Is us oh, fighting. So that's twelve damage. Okay. Um, six for the guy who passed. And then at that moment he falls. You see, even though he has his shield up and everything, you see him crumble under it. Yes, and he falls. Nice. He, you notice that some of the, I'd say, brethren around, seeing a fallen comrade, that um, that's a big deal. Anything else? Or I'm your own deck. My keep's still up until this, right? Yeah, no, you, it's over now. You just acted. That's that was you your turn. Yep. So, he, but I, but I, eh, never mind. You used it on your reaction yeah, before. It. You're good. Also, kind of want to say, yeah, that's, that's it. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> that's great. Oh, good. <laughs> good. All right. Yeah, All right. Uh, I'm gonna make fucking two attacks against this fucker. Okay. Well, my action and bonus action attacks. Okay. Sixteen to hit. Uh, that'll hit. Thank fucking Christ. <laughs> and then fifteen to hit. Okay. Well, okay. Uh, second one miss. No, second, second one miss. Damn. Now, as you do that, it, roll the damage. But I'm going to tell you that this guy, he's going to use a reaction, and you see him move up his hand, the one that casted the one uh, spell earlier. You see him form with two of his hands, and he pushes uh -oh. out and form in front of him. And I need you to give me a um, buh, buh, buh. give me a strength saving throw. Uh, one second. The yeah. guy takes. Um, fucking 13 piercing damage. Okay. Um, and then a strength save, you say? Yep. I, I think it should be an advantage, because he's a large creature. Yeah, right now. that's fine. Yeah, you can do it at advantage. Uh, 16 plus uh, something that gives you. Yep, so you notice that he pulls <coughs> back his hands, and you feel this huge gust of wind. It starts pushing you, but you grip in with your claws, and you, it, it doesn't push you back. You kind of pierce through it, get low to the ground, and gain leverage. Underneath it, the spell of deceased, nothing happens. End of your turn? Oh, yeah. All right. These three are acting. Him. He acts first. He turns in. All right. It's time. We're taking you in, dead or alive. It's up to you. You took one down. He rears back and he pulls his bow and he notches it right at you, shooting twice. Uh, that's 18. And then that's a little miss. So the first one, 10. That is piercing. And then he is going to. Mm, no, we're not going to do that. <clears throat> and then the uh, this guy, he's going into you. With a spear twice. The second one will hit 17. That hit? Just barely, yeah. Okay, so one hits. Uh, six piercing. Okay. And then uh, this one into you. Twice. This guy's got a sword. Uh, 18. And then net one. So. <laughs> 10. Pug's just not doing anything. No. Lame. <laughs> he surrendered. Pug's a bitch. He dropped his sword in the beginning. Because he has a bitch. <laughs> Uh, da, 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 da. That is those three. Then the back three. He's dead. That guy's frightened. He's going to uh, pull up his cape, stand, um, and he's going to try and cast Gust on you. Um, I need a strength save. Yep. So he rears back his hands as well and he pushes forward, trying to push you away from him. 14 You flight. pass. It's not strong enough. He's not that strong of a spellcaster. That's the end of his turn. Uh, On to you. Fuck this. You're, I think you have an advantage if he hits that guy, right? Would that be flanking? <coughs> or no? It would be a plus two. Or that's mm -hmm. how we're going to be flanking. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yep. I'm going to look at you and nod my head because I think you can take him. You son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. And I'm going to go this way. <laughs> you gotta lay on this would be you know. this would be at advantage, yeah. 
two. Yeah. Plus two. Yeah. yeah, just get plus two. Plus two. Okay. Yeah. And right. I'm going to try to swing the one hand over, over this guy. So you rear up, and you. 18 to hit. Yep, you slam into two. him. Does not hear you coming. Uh, 11. Or okay. no, sorry. It's plus four. So 13. Yeah, so 13 you. 13 damage. Wait, what'd you take for a little bit? Did you? I saw any score improvements. Yeah, this so guy you, is. Uh, are you smiting? Wisdom and charisma. Are you smiting? Yes. Okay. This is the same one Orm hit. Ooh! Ooh. 15. He's whew, slammed. You rip through him, coming up behind. You just threw him through. Even though the armor kind of cuts through, you cut at least, I'd say, a foot and a half into his torso. And then shoulder to, And then pull it back. He falls. The guy next to you becomes enraged. Within doing so, he turns and he just hacks out once to you, a disadvantage in a fury. Uh, 10? You're like, yeah, not 20 on the second one. 10? No. No. He just quing, it slams off of you, kind of parry it with your sword. Uh, onto you, Perrin. All right. I'm gonna favor foe this guy. Okay. In front of me. Yep. And then I'm going to... Take another swing at him with the, the scimitar. Alright. Okay, see, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Fucking hell. Uh, 21. Yep, so you ram and boom, just slam into him. 26. Turn down a little bit. <laughs> huh? Oh, thank you. Sorry, okay. Uh, 7 damage. Alright, yep. Miss going. <laughs> Okay, so you slam into him. Anything else? You good? Nope. Alright. On to you, Gildor. I told the dead on this guy. What is it? 15 Chris or Will? Uh, 17 natural. Why? <laughs> Just why? Alright, anything else? Fuck, dude, he needs another wisdom save. Okay, you can <laughs> teleport away. Yes, sir. Uh, eight. Fail it. And you find again? He's right. Okay. I'm like over fucking here now. <laughs> yep. Oh! Oh, you Gildo, are you bitch! You bitch! <laughs> I don't have wagon insurance! Uh, or I'm under you. They could have just killed Perrin. The guy is still uh, up yeah, against probably. me, right? Because he can't mm-hmm. approach okay. me, so he has to go to you. Thanks, I'm just gonna make. Oh, 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 oh. Not only did you fuck this situation, now you're gonna fuck me in the ass in the combat! What's your HP? I man? bury Perrin. I bet. Don't fucking <laughs> dare. <laughs> don't fucking no. dare. Oh. 12. Okay, 17? Yep. Yes. Uh, 8 uh, plus 3 is 11. Uh, yeah. Here? Yeah. Alright, so you rear back. You notice that you pierce through quite a bit of his armor. You start bloodying him decently well. Not plus 15. Jesus. 15? <laughs> That'll miss. Okay. Then that's it. Alright, at this point, you'll see this one. He turns. He's gonna shoot into you. Noticing as he makes certain, I'd say, more gestures with his hands signaling amongst the heat of the combat. As they do so, he's gonna move up this time. As he does, those two are in the other squad, or no, this one's in this one. At this moment, you get attack of opportunity as he's moving over here. God Who damn it, 15. Uh, you do as well. Huh? I'm gonna heal this shit out of you. 15. Ooh, that Ooh. No, miss, no. miss. Nine. Okay, so here come an uh, onslaught. <clears throat> You fucked me, Wayne. Uh, the first one's gonna hit on... Wizard and Bloom. So, uh, 16? That's, uh, 16? Yeah, you just beat me with just one. Okay, so the first guy hits with everything. Second guy misses the first one. Misses. That one. 18. So you get hit by three. Here comes the damage. You ready? Yeah. 17 for the first guy. Eight for the second guy. Yeah, 17 damage for the first two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm knocked unconscious for some Alright, so the great sword he swings through and boom, slams through, and then the second guy with another dagger just slices, and as you do so, you fall unconscious. As these two turn, they put up some sort of shield with their cloak. Like just the yeah, like what seems I have. To be, seems to be, yep. This, I'd say the dwarf, he turns over your body 
as he grabs onto it, it seems as if he's looking to start heading back towards his horse. Uh, that is the end of this. Wait, Yoke. this guy didn't act? He's not part of that. Oh yeah, he was part of that group. Uh, the second group. He's, He's the only one left. Know. Um, he can't approach me. Right, he can't approach you. You, you know what? He's gonna go up in the wagon. He's gonna go here. He's gonna go up to Pug. Wait, isn't Pug just sitting here like... Yep. He on. grabs him. Takes 18 on intimidation as he yells at all of you. And this is just going to be um, minus one on your next attack unless you guys make your saving throws. I need a charisma, wisdom saving throw here. You need to charisma or wisdom or wisdom or wisdom. And I need you to be eighteen. Uh, I'm not nineteen. Yet. Nice. No. Fails here minus one on your next attack. Fail. Minus one. I'm unconscious. You're good. So he turns <laughs> and he grabs the pug. All right, we need to just stop this. I'm going to take pug. And we have your other comrade. What are you going to do? Lay down your arms. And that is the end of their turn. Oh, On I'm just sitting there, I'm just like, I don't fucking care. He's trying to. <clears throat> yep. You said he has him at knife point? Or he... But do I know this? You can see it. He announced it. He announced it, yeah. Can he get range to punch? To punch? Well, to like... Yeah, you know, he can. Him with your <laughs> yeah. Weapon. yeah, he can. Can you beat the shit out of that guy? He can go 5, yeah. 10, 15, 20, 25, you can get there. What you doing? That would be probably too tough. You don't think I can flip that wagon, do you? Might be able to. <laughs> might be able to. He has 18 strength. So not not push but pull. If you fucking I mean, either way, it's gonna be hard. You can call it out and hold your action until I do it. I mean, you can try. There's no horses. Just wood. Yeah, it's just a wooden wagon. This thing ain't that heavy. Yeah. True. Probably weighs about five or six hundred pounds. Yeah, and, and he's a swole as fuck. Oh, right? he is very swole. I'm gonna do. Okay, so you want to try and tip it? So I want to grab, it. like, I want to grab the edge and just try to like yank Pull it down. Pull it towards you, so you kind of rock it and then yeah. whoop, and oh, rip it. Oh, that's cool. Okay, oh, so, so you're flipping it this way. So yeah, yeah. we can pull towards me. Yes. Pull on your guys. All right, so side. give me a strength check. That's fucking okay. smart. Ooh, thirteen. All right. I wouldn't add my proficiency, would I? But yeah, is this it strength? Would it be an athletic strength? You are not athletics. I am, but no. Just straight up strength would be twelve. No. So you pull it and you rock it and you pull it and you, and you feel it creak and the tires kind of lift off. But right at the last second, your muscles give in and it and your feet give in. It drops back. And it knocks the guy prone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Stumbles accidentally good. cuts Pug's throat. <laughs> <laughs> Since I failed, I guess I'll just like run back here. Okay. And just like not directly in sight, but right. just like right here. Off the side. Yeah. Got you. Alright, parent on to you. Death save. What's up? What's up? Ten or above. Ten or above. above. You're starting to get used to these. Seventeen. Alright, oh. so you make one. Uh, on to you, Mr. Orum. No, it's waiting to me. Oh, waiting. sorry, I went ahead of myself. I am moving here. Okay. And I'm casting Wither and Bloom. You heal for 1d10 plus 7. And I need a con save of 15 for all of these guys. Of how much? Two fail. You said 1d10 plus 1? They all fail. Plus 7. They all fail. Ooh, okay. All three fail. All three fail? Yeah. Wow. They okay. take... 7 necrotic damage. That's funny, that's the only uh, thing I have before I got my ass kicked. You hear him, and he falls. Yeah, he like rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I just wake up because I'm he like, hey, what the fuck? <laughs> Body just slumps, just armor and well, weapon it, left. Like, it looks like all of the 
What else? Life from them drained from them into you. Oh. Yes. So you just feel green vitality ripping from them into you. I'm just like, ew! Oh god, what the fuck? <laughs> Screams of horror fill your vitality. <laughs> Alright, is that it? Yes, sir, that's it. I'm taking my socks off. I know it may be weird, but it's happening, bro. <laughs> I've been contemplating it for a while. Right. Really? Just do it. Yeah. I feel ten times cooler already. <laughs> Alright, so you done? Or I'm on to you. I started taking my socks off. <laughs> <laughs> is the wagon oh, covered? Or did yes, it's like... Wind blow it up? No, it's slightly covered. Can you turn this fucking fan on? No. No, I'm not going to this yeah. fucking microphone shit. How about you buy, me, you buy me a stand and then we'll screw it into the ceiling next week. Screw it, I don't want this one. Um, I'm a large creature. I'm like damn near as tall as a carriage. It'd be like difficult terrain, right? The carriage? Yeah. Total, it's about 12 feet in total height up to the height of the mass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For you, it's not big. No. Um, I want to fucking turn around and I want to fucking climb back up onto the exact place I jumped off originally. Okay. And just fucking make my way through the slit. And just start heading, and I'll, I'll fucking, like, if, if he's holding Pug, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna keep walking forward, and then if I get within five feet of him, I'm gonna bite him. I'm gonna make the attempt anyway. <clears throat> okay, so, as you do so, <clears throat> if you're walking, he's gonna probably act. Um, just letting you know. He's gonna see you coming towards him and probably act before you get to him, is what I'm saying. Oh, then would I just be able to like just fucking? Yeah, give me like an acrobatics to traverse up and through quickly. Yeah, I'll let you just get to him. Okay, let me fucking uh, roll that. It's D. It's ten plus something. I think it's like two. Uh, if it was athletics or acrobatics. Acrobatics. Uh, acrobatics. It would be. Um, whatever your hyena is. Fuck, I didn't take that. Uh, it'd be twelve total. So you go up and you. Jump up and you sh shake it and wrap, and then you move around. You kind of knock into him, and as you do so, oh, you're lucky. He kind of stumbles back, knocking the blade off kilter, but then grabs it, separating from him and Pug just enough for you to get an attack in. So you move up, making it around and about, and make it to about right here, right next I'm to him. I'm taking almost up the entirety of the ship. Oh, certainly. I like this. This is what I want. You're taking up what the almost the entirety of the carriage. carriage. Yeah, yeah. Nice. almost. <clears throat> yeah, just just about. Wait, can I try that? And fucking that uh, is a no. <laughs> but then I'll fucking try and do that. Hey, there we go. That will hit for oh yeah, it's 15 plus five, 20 yep. to hit. Seven bludgeoning damage. Okay, you will see that it starts piercing through part of his exterior armor with your huge slashing and biting as it rips through. Uh, anything else? No, I'm just trying Pug, to keep me, Pug, yeah, behind yeah. me. As I was about to say, Pug makes a way, it, it kind of makes it in between you and him. Alright, now these guys are going to act. <clears throat> oh, okay. 12. Yeah, it's a good heal. Yeah, it's actually. I'm out of level 2 spells. That was where that I was, was uh, before I got my ass kicked. I'm probably going to get my ass kicked. Okay. Yeah, but you're not going to die. Okay. Probably. The guy in the caravan, no, wait, I'm sorry. gonna act first. Here, roll initiative against me, he's gonna try and make a go for Pug, and I'm assuming you're gonna try and stop him. Uh, yes. Okay, so this will be an actual moment here. Uh, I rolled a 10 eight. plus 1. 8. Okay, so he's gonna act first. So you see him, he jaunts through, and he darts off part of the caravan and springs forward, and as he does so, he takes part of his blade, swings on the back, and... And let's see, oh my god, Pug rolls a 19. He notices it, and as he does so, he just ducks down. You see the blade cut over, almost grazing the top of his scalp, <laughs> slicing it. You see the blood kind of squirt off the back. You notice as you act, you turn over and make your way back, repositioning your way in between him and Pug. Uh, the other three, the one guy, he turns, and he pulls you back onto his horse, and gets on top of it. Wait, he's able oh wait, you're healed back up. Yeah, you're getting slammed then. Uh, oh god. One hits, you're 16? Or you have 15 ace? 15. Yeah, one hits then. Uh, the second one that misses, uh, and that guy's dead. So you get hit by one, 
Great sword into your body. 11 rolling Ooh. a 9. So still he comes alive. in. Whoa. And he slams into you. You're still up? Yeah. At this point, the guy in the front, he makes a whistle. And at this point, you see two of them, this one, jump on his horse. This one start making his way towards the horse as well. And in both of their movement, you get an attack of opportunity as they both jump onto this horse and get ready to run. Are they still within 10 feet of the fucking here? Kill them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sick. Currently, I mean, they haven't moved yet. I need to see what happens. Well, they can't kill them. Yeah, they can. They have a horse. He hasn't moved yet. 217s on both of them. You gonna attack twice? You only get one. Oh, I only get one. Mm -hmm. So okay. you hit one. So which one do you want to hit? The guy with the bow or the guy that was fighting you? Uh, you can know, choose either one. Which one's about to get, like, are they both helping on the same horse? Or yep, just, yep. Okay. the one guy didn't have a horse, the other guy's jumping on the other. I was, which I was tell which you, one was about to drive the horse? This guy. Okay, I'll go for that guy. So 17. Still yep, so you swing and you catch him. As he turns, you catch the back of his armor. There's no plating. You slice right through his back. Damage? Yeah, uh... Cause, uh, yeah, I definitely lost my favorite photo one. Nine. Okay, so as you slice, you see he becomes very weak. You hear, oh! He keeps barely walking as he mounts up. You hear a whistle, and... <clears throat> Dang, I gotta see. Oh, shit. Okay, so they will go on horseback. In a very quick motion, it as they bolt off. The guy in the caravan, acting, is the only one left alive at the top of your turn. These guys are still in the battlefield. Once they make it off, though, they're out of vision and out of sight. You guys can choose a chase that is up to you. I'm just letting you know the mechanics. Uh, fuck this. What do you want to do? The... So this guy, yep. he's not near Pug. No. Or he like he whiffed. Whiffed, got on the other side. Pug got onto the back, and, he's and then in between. he's in between. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna run here. Thirty feet is my movement. Okay. That is sixty feet <clears throat> from them. Fifty, actually. Okay. I'm gonna cast command on the horse okay now so it says if the horse doesn't understand your language it doesn't count but general knowledge would a horse know what halt like would they know that command halt if it's in combat give me a give me an animal handling check at disadvantage <laughs> actually give me an animal handling and a history <laughs> to see if you know the training of what these horses like command would be okay so you said Animal handling. Animal handling. And then a history. Okay. Ooh. Seven for the animal handling. Okay. History, of course, minus one, seven. <laughs> okay, so you're not quite sure the command, and you're not quite sure, even if you did know the command, if you would know it yourself, or where right. these horses, what they were trained to know. Okay, so let's give it a shot. I'm going to try to tell the horse to halt. Okay. I need a wisdom save. No. It looks and it kind of hears almost this stammering, I'm assuming, inside it's or yelling. No, this is a magical word, it's right? A, so yeah. you're, you're, you're basically pulsating this through it and the horse in a moment, you hear it and it stammers off in a minute. You hear it like kick back as it neighs really loud. Uh, one falls off as he's very weak. Uh, the other one holds on as the horse does stop for a moment. Uh, you see the rider though in an active flurry <laughs> kick up and you'll see an animal handling two. Does not get control of it. As he kind of pulls it out, he can't get back control of the reins. It seems to be halted. You good? You gonna yeah. move anymore? Was that all your movement? That was my movement. Sure, okay, parent on you. Ah. Oh, 
Okay. Oh, you bet your ass I'm shooting the guy on the horse. <clears throat> Alright, so you pull back. Are you sharpshooter? Uh, well, first, I'm going to. Okay, so I'm going to use a favorite fellow on him real quick. The guy on the horse. Okay. And then I'm also going to sharpshooter. So I'll have minus five to. So you're plus one to hit. Right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus one to hit. Yep. But it'll have a plus ten to the attack damage. If, uh, it if you hit it, it let's hit. see it. Oh my god. <sighs> <sighs> We're, We're doing yeah, so I good. Can, I can see it from back here. So as you pull back, you notch in and you, whew, and it seems as if within the wild flurry of the horse, you can't, can't hit it. It goes astray. Anything else? Is still a bonus action? No. Yeah. Well, favorite foe's a bonus action. Oh, favorite foe, yeah. Okay. You can move. Yeah, you, you have movement. Uh, bu -bu 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 yeah, no, I'm good. All right, Gildor. I told the dead the guy on the horse, so it's a 15 wisdom save. Passed. Me beats three in a row, baby. 15 or 14 plus one. <laughs> Anything else? Moves? <laughs> Sometimes I can roll hot too. You good? Yeah, that's it. Alright. Arm? Uh, I'm gonna make two attacks against the guy in front of me. Alright. Um. Am I gonna do that? He's like looking at you. <gasps> We're going to keep going around, are we? So I'm, instead of making. Um, it's gonna be an attack, but it's not gonna be like the damage attack. It's gonna be a shove, and I want to shove him out of the fucking car. Right. So let's fucking see what that does. Fucking no! Christ alive! No one. And then uh, nine fourteen to hit on my bonus action. Nope. So you Jesus <laughs> fucking and you Christ. miss. And then he's the only one that connect. Um. Yeah, so his animal handling, he gets back control, and you see him pick this member up, and these two go away. You hear a whistle, and they boom, around the mountain pass. They're out. This one, you see him, very beaten and bloodied. He grins, you see blood lying in his teeth. <laughs> his hand waves up in front of you both, and you see the whitish blue again, and I need everybody to make a constitution save. The guy in front of me? Everyone? Yeah, everybody. Yeah, right here. Yeah, this guy. He's going this way. What the fuck? Okay. 16? You pass. You're gonna take half. Like 9. Fail. 20? You pass. Fail. fail. So, so those that fail, you're gonna take uh, 7, or 8, excuse me, and those that pass are taking 4. Oh my god, just. And you feel this wave of cold just boom, wave through the area. He then turns and you see this icy blue inside his veins almost start to like wither inside his body. It seems as if he's maybe overexerted himself. He falls down, barely conscious. He does not move. His eyes almost roll back as he hears a loud like thump as he slams into the caravan. Oh, my brothers, they have died, but... I will try and take you with me. And then that is the end of his turn. What do you guys wish to do? On to you, Farkas. He's basically unconscious. He's not dead, just unconscious. Barely awake. Oh, let's see. I haven't moved. So really, I can only get if oh, I wanted to move. Can I jump in from over here? Or my yeah, you can jump in through the front. Um, can I go up there and knock him unconscious? Try to. Yeah, you can go, go up in there and then go up and really yeah. slam into him. Yeah, so you move, like make your way up and, just Yep, so you just go, I don't want to make you attack because he's on the ground. So you make your way up and you just boom, slam him in the side of his face. Definitely unconscious now. And at that time, I'll say you guys are out of combat. So, at this moment, what do you guys wish to do? 
Puck turns and he looks at you and he jumps off the side. He regathers his sword and he makes his way back up onto the caravan. Oh. He looks around. We just... We just took out some of these soldiers and... What are we, what are we gonna do? Two of them made it off. They're headed towards Nofros. Are we running? Are we heading in? Is anybody hurt? Are we all alive? Fucking You're unconscious. Yeah. Yep. I will medicine check him. Okay, so you run over and you slap some mud with some twigs and it forms into some medicine salve and you slam it into his wounds. Seven, so... Twenty. So you... And you feel revitalized. You're stabilized. You come back. You have one, one HP. HP I was gonna like, and you're fine. Is it over? Did we win? No. <laughs> I said we we're still standing, so yeah, we I need think to, it's a yes. We need to get out of here. Also, one thing. What the fuck was that? <laughs> we don't have time. This pug kind of turns to argue right now. Two got away. They're going to be moving very quickly. We must make haste on what we are going to decide to do. We can't just sit here a mile outside the city. We are sitting ducks. You don't have any horses. They cut them in the beginning. So, what do you guys want to do? They, you said that the one guys went directly towards the city? Yeah. North is this way, they went this way. You don't know if they went directly towards the city. I say let's just fucking book it towards the city. We're only a mile, a couple minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Uh, get in the city and then find a place to live. I used my last level 2 spell slot on Ultra Self again, and the Scraggly Elf is back. I'm gonna use a. Any more? Uh, some of these guys had cape mechanisms. Oh, it took a while to take those off, didn't mm-hmm. they? Yep. Did it take a while to take the I want to put this one's body in my safely, bag yeah. of holding. And some oh. of them are damaged. I'll tell you right. that. That guy's, that guy's, and this guy's are pretty fucked up. You guys. Have yeah, I just need. I need his bones though. It's not worth the time. Okay. Um, so I need a. You taking the body? Him. Yeah. Okay, you're. That's gonna take a like. That's a yeah, five. My half of half of my bag bag of holding is bodies right now. <laughs> well, two bodies, because that that'd be about most of it. I'd say you'd have room for probably maybe one more small body. I don't, I don't need any more bodies. Yeah. I only need two. Here's <laughs> here's this guy. I need a token that's not gonna be. Yep. To signify his body. Uh, here you can have this little goblin dude. I got skeletons on the way, so. Oh, um, you guys get some skeletons? Yeah. This is a Starfinder guy, one of Yeah, it? I'm 3D printing some form. Alright, so. You guys. Ah, <gasps> Kier's Kier wounds level one, and I only get two health back. God fucking damn. Now, don't you add your spellcasting modifier to Kier wounds? Yeah. So you get, uh. Isn't that wisdom? Yeah. It's yeah, wisdom modifier. That's what I'm saying. Damn. Damn. So you guys are going towards town? Are you still hanging? You're still hanging. No, I that that last like cold wind thing Uh, took my last three HP. So I'm not hanging. No. You got pretty much full. Uh, roughly, I am. I'm missing a little bit, but. Oh, get walking. I guess. Well, are you walking or are you running? We are. Oh, I'm I'm the healthiest boy. I wasn't touched once. We're fucking bullies. I frightened the guy that was close to me. Yeah, yeah twice. Thanks. thanks, wife, for leaving that guy. I'm gonna lay on hands myself. That guy didn't hit you. And John. <laughs> okay, <laughs> how much? John, you have you get ten Ooh, HP. That's and I'm gonna take now. five for myself. Alright, so at this moment you guys Thank book it towards this. the city entrance. You guys make it Thank a couple you. hundred feet out. And you guys make it to here. You guys start making your way towards the front gate. As you do so, do do do. Where are my two guards at? There we go. You see two guards at the front of the city. As you approach, you see a sign of Northros. You see a walkway that leads down a long beaten path, and as it gets closer, stone pebbles start lining it. It's the first pathway that you lead into the city that you see, signifying some sort of. I'd say somewhat possible wealth. Um, as you guys get close, you can see that this gate is not even completed being built yet. The city and the wall is still patched in many areas, still being constructed. As you approach, the guards kind of meet as they walk down. Oh, who goes there? 
Name and business. We have many passengers and many people coming through here. Are you here for business or? And you can tell this guard is very disgruntled. Um, the other one at the moment seems to be somewhat detached, kind of just zoning out. What do you guys want to do? Refugees. Coming from, uh, I'd say the surface or? Re well, no, we're actually from, uh, Aldr uh not Aldronis. Okay. Aldrin, whatever that Aldris, is. Aldris. Yeah, Aldris. Uh, we got recommended by General Aldronis um, to go through the pass. Oh, oh. I, um, I know who you're talking about. Uh, yeah. There, there, there's the city Alris, Al and then there's General yes. Aldronis. Yeah. Hence on, the confusion. Yeah, I think, yeah. So it's. And then uh, we're trying to get some bullshit about why we look so scuffed up to over it. Not unless they ask. Yeah, Aldris and Eldronis, yes. Correct. So, you've been sent here by him. Under good presence, I assume, we can let you in. Now, uh, we heard about a scuffle at the caravan site. Rock soldiers headed up the way. You guys wouldn't know anything about that, would you? We heard that some caravans were, well, Let's just say raided. We heard that some people died. What's your opinion on the rocks? Oh, currently, I just do what they say. I try and keep my eyes and my nose low. Right. The rocks are bullies. They're assholes. They came up, they started raiding caravans because they fucking could. I agree. And frankly, assholes. <laughs> frankly, I'm getting sick and fucking tired of it. They just do whatever the fuck they want. They terrorize whoever they please, and, and it's getting obnoxious. And so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's getting old. <laughs> fuck those guys! <laughs> All right. So, if you don't like them, what, kind of what's the I don't want to say I don't really like them, but I'm just going to leave my opinion here say. Yeah. You can enter the city. Thank you. I appreciate and, uh, it. Just... Keep a low profile, try and stay out of trouble. That's the the plan. You guys make your way into the city. Now, as you guys look around, and you guys make your way through the gate, you can see that the city is very brand new. I mean, very early building bricks. Oh, I can smell the some paint of, and everything. Yeah, some, <laughs> of the, some of the buildings haven't even been constructed all the way. You see basically a small housing district that seems to be constructed some sort of religious center, a town center, and then some sort of bigger, I'd say, you can just tell, seems to be maybe a governmental, you know, maybe a city council type building. Um, you guys walk around and you see a man very well dressed in the center of the town, near the, um, well, in the center near around a lot of people. It seems as if he's speaking about some of the elections that are coming up. He sees you all kind of making your way about the city and he sends what looks to be a small messenger boy and he comes running up to you all and he walks up and he shows you all a flyer and it's a man and you see the name of Eldronis and a m multitude of others that seem to be possibly running for election coming up. You only notice Eldronis after speaking. Um, the rest of the names do not seem familiar. You see some of them aren't even really filled in. There's still elections to be nominated. As you guys look around, a man speaking. So, we are here and we are going to build this city within the coming months. Regardless of what these other regions are going to do, whether they sanction all the supplies that we need, we will find them elsewhere. We will build this city. You notice that looking around, there's a lot of work that needs done, but not a lot of resources. Is not a lot of minerals. Um, most people are using makeshift tents and things of that nature. Um, as you look around, uh, you look and Perrin, you see someone that kind of seems off in the distance. And as you look, he seems to be very, I'd say, very similar to Monty, the dwarf that you saw in the previous city outside of Stormbridge who took you. You noticed that when Monty was taking you, he had a couple tattoos on his shoulder. 
and as you see him... Wait, I, Monty? Which one's Monty? The one that the that's kidnapped. the guy that you have in your bag. Yeah, the Epstein guy? Remember that? Yeah, the guy that kidnapped John. Wait, there's another Monty? I mean, it looks very similar. But, uh, oh. As you guys are looking around... Because his dead body's in my bag. <laughs> So as you as so you're walking around, around, you see another smaller I check darker the bag. Just like pull it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's there. He's there. Um, as you look around, and then you guys kind of look back, you notice that there's a lot of work that needs to be done. People have wanted help signs everywhere. Minerals needed. Resources needed. There's civil war possibly just by what you can tell with Reese. As you look around. Many have anti re signs up. It seems as if there's some huge clash within this. As you hear this man speak into the center of town, Gather! We shall speak of what we can do to further our leverage with making them hear us. We must figure out a way to get resources. If we stop their food, maybe if we post a war and start shutting down trade outside their city. They'll feel like we do. They need things. You hear some people chime in, yeah, maybe if we cut down their food supply, you know, cut them out dry, they won't have any food. You hear rummages going through the town. What do you guys want to do? My opinion is, I think we need, like, new... I need new clothes. New clothes. Maybe a different color than purple. He needs new clothes and new disguise. And so do both you. And also a nap. <laughs> so all three of those, those, those are the things we need to work on. <sighs> Which one are you going to start with? Let's do clothes. And then maybe some food and a nap! Pug chimes in as he kind of... I'm quite tired as you look around. It's getting to be about 4 or 5 p.m. Still bleeding from like... Yeah, he's got a little bit drizzling down. He kind of <laughs> cups drip, it. Drip, drip. It's all right. I'll, I'll make it. But we should at least tend to ourselves before we run in with anybody else. If we catch ourselves unrested and we run into any rock soldiers here, it will not bide well for us. No, we won't. Yeah, let's get close in the morning. Now, as you guys head around, you guys do see that there is what looks to be a small ruby record tavern that seems to be in the early stages of being built. Um, you do notice that they do not have food yet, but they do have a couple of places that you could stay, but you guys are going to have to bunk up in two rooms. Or you guys could maybe try and fit into one if you want. But two Jokes people... You, I can sleep standing. Yeah, two people are going to need to sleep either not in a bed. Well, I can uh, meditate. Yeah, I don't need a not bed. an issue. Okay, it'd be one gold for one room if you guys wish to stay for the night. That'll give you some, at least a bath. No food, but at least give you something to sleep through the night if you guys wish to do that. Jokes on you, two of us don't even eat food. <laughs> True that. <laughs> well, you guys at least have a room. Is there anything else you want to do? I'll, I'll pay for the room because I don't need food. Yeah, it's very basic. It's, it's somewhat the makeshift. Yet. There's not even a lobby for the most part. And then once we're in the room, my alter self drops. Now. Everybody give me a perception check as you guys do start walking um, around that area where the uh, inn is located. 14. Okay. You hear um, some people talking in a nearby area. They seem to be kind of around the bend. Um, I'd say in the lower part of the city, you guys can kind of see as we move it up into here. As you guys are kind of hanging out and about, notice that as you guys are walking through, off in this distance, you see a larger building. It seems to be a decent estate or possibly a city council, maybe governmental building. And you hear people kind of chitter chattering over in this direction. You can't quite see them yet, but you hear them speaking. They're talking about some sort of, it sounds like abominations, or maybe some sort of monsters. What was the perception? That was for the perception check. I don't know what you roll. A nine. Nope. You just hear two people. I don't know. I probably only have like forty minutes of like elf looking like, so I maybe should just kick the fucking in or. There's people who are talking about abominations. 
Yeah, it sounds like in this direction. I rolled a 10. You hear people talking. You hear, people talking. You hear monsters. Maybe not necessarily oh. all of it, but oh, you hear. Oh, mine was 18. You definitely hear off in this direction. You hear people around the corner. It sounds like two people conversing about some sort of abominations. Okay. I'm looking for an end. All right, so as you pass through, you go through. You guys are just looking to save for the night. You guys are ready to rest? Yeah. All right, so you guys go through. You take a long rest. We'll just skip through. You guys stay the night. Stay for a full night. Now, you guys stay in your hotel rooms. You, as you're sleeping, I need a constitution save at a disadvantage. Yep. Nine. Ooh. Okay. So, as you're in your room sleeping, you continuously start hearing these almost, I'd say, horror or horror-like, like, um, I don't want to say voices, but almost like this repetition of a, of a sound in your head that kind of just repetitively goes over and over of this thrumming. And as it builds, you feel this hot sensation. Your body just starts beating out. You break into this hot sweat and you feel like you almost are going to just erupt throughout the night. You wake in a hot flash and right before you wake, you see this bright, scaled, red creature. And then it breaks away. You see bright red destruction just bearing down on the land. And then you hear in the break of a second, right before you open, you are weak. And then you wake up. Kind of look around. And then in a moment, you notice that everybody's still sleeping. You're able to go back to sleep. You make it through the rest of the night and nothing else happens. The next morning, the rest of you guys wake. You guys get ready to walk out. And as you're preparing yourselves, what do you guys wish to do? Before we go out of the room, I cast Alter Self again. This is one of my, I only have two level twos left. And I look like I did the last time I cast it. Okay. Now, as you guys, you guys will be coming out of over here. As you guys are getting ready to, I'd say, come out. Give me perception checks. Oh, we're done. Eighteen. Okay, that's two. So got eighteen. That one. Nice. Garbage. Nine. All right. So, parent for the most part, he hears that there's people. As you guys are getting ready to make your way out. They start hearing talks of people in town that have come overnight. You notice that there's people that seem to be somewhat frightened that they are asking questions and that they seem to be being very persistent and they're making their way through the town and they are not very happy whatsoever. Some of these people do not necessarily know exactly who, and just by walking through, you're not exactly sure who they're talking about, but it sounds as if there's somebody in town that is not very, I'd say, happy. You guys are basically waking up and you heard, of, you heard that there's people in town that it sounds like are not wanted. You guys awake to hearing of people talking outside of your guys' in that there's people in town that are not very happy and they seem to be uh, causing a little bit of an issue this morning. That's all you know. Is, the, is there like a barkeep? Uh, no barkeep, there's more like a, um, I'd say like an assistant that checks people in. It's like being still built, so there's more or less like a basic check-in area. Okay. Um, I would like to walk up. Right, you see a small little half elf, somewhat young. You approach, kind of fucking off. This is a boy. Yep. Just, okay. Man, yeah, he's like maybe 22, 24, very young. Oh, oh so this is like a baby. What's that half elf? Hello. Oh, hi there. Hi. Uh, my associates and I are new. We're oh. refugees. Mm-hmm. 
we are trying to find some um, provisions, uh, preferably some new new clothes. Oh, okay. Some of our old ones are getting a little ragged. Mm. If I was looking for something like that, um, you any kind of points off around the corner. There's there's. We haven't really made a shop district yet, it's kind of in the works, but there's a couple merchants out there. You might be able to get something there. If not, kind of leans in. I don't like to talk about it because we're kind of rivals, but head to Reist. Or even the Cryptic Crossing mm. for Texwell. Those are probably better places to get any goods right now. We're, we're kind of in a miniature, I'd say, war right now with Reist. Mm -hmm. They've cut off all trade routes and... Um, you guys being new, I've never seen you here. Well, let's just say stuff's getting kind of rough. They're coming into town, want money, but we've already paid them for minerals that they haven't given us. And, uh, well, I'm just going to tell you, if you go there, you might want to get your items before you pay. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Now, head towards Cryptic Crossing. There's stuff, and you kind of... Put this hand on his forehead. Oh, it's quite expensive. But it's high quality. Mostly made near Hexwell. Some of their inventions there are top of the line. So you can get mostly anything you need there. Or at least if you can make it through the crossing, the bridge. Make your way to Hexwell. Free clear, refugees like you. You can probably get anything you want there. That's my goal someday if I can get out of Geom. Make my way across that bridge. I don't have the money to make it through the airfares. It's, whew, is it so pricey, but, and the Rocks family, ah, oh, they control it. So, if you're looking for anything in town, probably not gonna get anything but scraps. So the bridge towards Hexwell that you were talking about, mm -hmm. uh, is that similar to Stonebridge? Are you familiar? I've heard myths about Stonebridge, never been to it, but I heard all the bridges have their own kind of secrets and myths to them. Okay. I heard the one that leads to Hexwell is mostly about puzzles and inventions. Oh, it's more the mind! <laughs> well, he's far. It pushes uh, you, you know? Not only physically, but mentally. Okay. It makes you think. It's very mischievous. It's hidden within the fog. All of them they have this mystical gaze that are put on them, makes them hard to traverse, it kind of, I don't know, it keeps us locked in our regions. We think that somebody at some point put them there, making us not want to communicate with the other regions, making air travel prominent. So, the fact is, I probably will never see the other bridges. may look at them, but I don't know if I'll ever cross them. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're telling me that there's a magical effect on each of these bridges. So they think I mean, that deters people from getting on them. Listen, some of the people have gone down many of these bridges never to be seen on the other side. And only one family controls all air traffic? Currently, yes. That seems kind of suspicious. It does seem suspicious. I don't know. Now that we've all like said that out loud, I just want everybody to realize that like there is a high chance. He kind of looks at you. How's like, nobody? How's nobody thought of that yet? Well, they they, they said to the they said to the press it was in us guys. Pay us to get to the other regions. Are you just now realizing that the Rocks family is a bunch of tool bags? <laughs> yeah, but this was more tool baggy well, than I thought. Do you know what they do though? People don't like them, but you know that they're needed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and because they're needed, they can get away with a bunch of real fucked up things. They made it on purpose. To they're abusing a, their need. But without them, they might not even. Well, we might not even have a home. Yeah, but this. who tells you? Who tells you that? Well, the, the rocks. Does the rocks tell you that? No, and he and he shows you this drawing, and he pulls it up as he's been kind of bored, and you see this huge like a uh, monstrous creature with like many eyes and huge arms it's these abominations these are terrorizing many of the regions the rocks region specifically that is where they made their home stay the monsters flood over the walls they climb over the cloud top regions and they topple through the surface they run through the lands pillaging it, 
and the rocks set down their stronghold in one of the major foundations of their spawnings. And within this, they repel abominations and demons every day Lord, to keep us safe. Without them... I don't know, sounds like fucking propaganda to sounds me. Sounds like they make the monsters themselves, honestly. They make them give themselves some use. Without them, we would have no safety. So yes, they imply harsh taxes and... Well, in some have cases... Harsh monopolies. Yes, they do, but safety in return. Kill random people on caravans. Well, then... And... You think you can do better? Maybe go to Rox Major and tell them yourselves that what you think and see if they shall listen. He kind of looks at you. He says, I'm pretty sure that Tor Rox himself will hear you out. Yeah, just like all this other family have heard us out this whole time. Who have you spoken with? I don't know. Shut up. Not lying. Don't need to have a deceive check because I don't know. You fucked. <laughs> so, you have any other questions about town? Give us about another month or two, and I promise you, Northrose will be something thriving. Currently, it's more of a makeshift town. Map. Hmm. Of uh, yeah. Here I got it. Where's that? Ba, ba, ba. I just need a cloak. Where's my binder? Did I lose my binder? Throw them in front of them? Right there? Nope. How the much would one? an arcane focus cost? There's another binder. Uh, sorry, bro. Like just a real common one? 50 gold? I think is that like a diamond? 50 gold? No, there it is. Something like that? I don't think it needs to be a diamond. A spell casting? No, there's wands, I think might be cheaper. Uh, I don't remember. Component pouches, I think, are 25 gold, maybe 50 gold. this one? Like that. Yeah, that worked. Okay. So, North Rose is kind of a central location. But, and then there is a town called Deep. Deep Pose? Deep, Deep Pass? Deep Pass? Where is it? Where? The very, the, where the bridge is? That's cryptic pass. Er. D. D. That's, that's definitely a D. It's backwards C? Oh, dead pass. It's dead pass. Okay. Sorry. I'm about to be. I thought you were talking about the. the Between the cloak side. and the crystal that I need for a new arcane focus so I can ditch the staff. Oh, okay. Yeah, dead pass goes to cryptic pass on the other side. Cryptic pass is. On the other side of high school. That's like where you come out. Yeah. And I'm gonna... Okay. You said that you, uh... One day wanted to look at the bridges. See, see them. Maybe even make your way across. He perks up. Oh yeah! I've, yeah. I've waited many years. I've studied and I've thought of many ways of one day traveling them myself. So, um... If you're you're probably more familiar with the region than I am. Uh, to get to the bridge going to Hexwell would be the the easiest route, or at least uh, a reliable route. Well, if you follow the trail, that should just get you there in probably three days travel at normal pace. Okay. Do you know of any um, unreliable routes? <clears throat> you could go through part of the forest, but. Lately, there's been painted ones that have been in there. Those the goblins? Been, yes, they've been uh, taking many caravans, many families, and other things that have been thriving within the hills as well. The mountains as well. If you go through the forest, you'll run into the mountains, and if you go there, they run the passageways. We usually don't go up in there unless we really need minerals. You could go there and probably skip a day, maybe a day and a half. But, depending on what you run into, it might even set you back an extra day. If you get lost in the mountains, or worse, you get lost in the forest, you might not uh, really make the passage through that quick. Or worse, you die. We have a forest guy. 
but have you seen those things that throws goblins? No. Yes! I have. We have, actually. We have. Yeah, me and uh, my good lad Fuck this here. <laughs> fought off a uh, good caravan of uh, goblins and actually had uh, quite a tussle with at least 20, no, 30 of them. Oh, can you describe to me what they look like? Big. And he flips through a page and he starts trying to draw it down as you go on and describe it. Big, giant, ugly beasts that walk on two legs. <laughs> as you go on and describe it in great detail. What do you guys want to do? <laughs> you guys can decide. I'm going to get more whiz on. I'll be right back. Alright, well, let's think here. We could have crossed the bridge and have done a bunch of, pu- bunch of bullshit puzzles from Star Trek. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um. Um. Or, what was the other route that we could think of here? I mean, at this, the, our current goal was to get to Axwell. Indeed. Yeah. So it's the bridge, and there's two paths. There's the normal one, and uh-huh. then there's the forest one. Uh-huh. Right. Okay, the forest one right. could lead us through. We can't get lost. Like, we literally cannot get lost. <coughs> yeah. Devil terrain doesn't slow your group down. Your group can't become lost except by magical means when you are engaged in another... Yeah, so we're good if we go through that route. Mm-hmm. That's the, all the goblins. Right. Uh... That's gonna trigger my PTSD and go Doom Slayer on their ass. <laughs> um, I wanna go buy a brown cloak and a crystal. Probably not gonna be able to get a crystal here, but you can probably get a brown cloak. Easy. Closest place you can probably get that, just as a knowledge, will be Reest. Or. Wanna, imagine you probably, when you blurry and back, probably pour off your little disguise. Why don't you get yourself a cloak too? Yeah. Alright, so what do you guys wanna do? You can go get a cloak at the general shop. There's kind of a scrap, so you can get one. And you can get some dye and at least dye one. Maybe a little wet in the next day, but it'll be alright. I just want a normal cloak. Yeah, that's fine. That's what I'm saying. That's yeah. yeah. So, give me a silver. I as well. How much is that? Silver. Gold? Is that ten silver? One tenth. Alright, anything else? Yeah, I'll probably change my green cloak. Because that's probably all I identify with. Cloak is also going to get a brown cloak, by the way. So, he gives you what. Is it silver? Uh, I'm gonna probably die like a. It doesn't matter, either dying or are they just getting close? I'm just gonna. I will say there is a couple, but some of them will need to be dyed. Okay. The ingredients will though cost the silver the same. Um. You can dye whatever color you want. I'd say we'll make it like, uh. a blue or something okay. like that. Yes, yeah, so let's stand out. What's up? cloak that's supposed to. Hey, don't for green, asshole! Alright, so, as you guys go through, getting your makeshift cloaks assorted, is there anything gold. else? What's the silver on that? One tenth. One tenth. He has way more gold than I do. Yep. <laughs> he has a lot of gold. You just want to do anything else? Uh, I don't believe so. Alright, so you guys make your way out of the inn. You guys reconvene at the center of town. And as you guys do so, you hear some men walking through town, and as you do so, these seem to be possibly what you heard earlier on, some of the people talking about having issues with. As you walk by, you see three individuals pushing some people in town. All right, so if you're not gonna pay, then we're not obviously giving minerals. You hear, man, we've already paid you. We paid you two months worth. We need the minerals to be able to build more so we can make more money to pay you more. (laughs) <laughs> That's not what I heard. You owe me at least another month's worth before I'm bringing anything this way. And you see him kick dirt and then spit on him, and then three individuals start walking away. As they do so, you hear him laugh as the man says, You're nothing but a rotten crook. I hope Reese just burns. Three men walk away, and they start making their way back towards the caravan. This time you guys are just in the middle of town, kind of just hanging out. I was fucked up. Mm-hmm. So I have like, how long has it been since we left the inn? Uh, about 30 minutes. You guys went and hey, got, I got like 30 minutes on the not yeah. being, you know, it's about thing. It's about 9 a.m. So, like, we should just. Early as midnight. So, we have a puzzle bridge and a wooded. Or a puzzle bridge or is happening regardless of the forest or the non path. Forest or the. The end point of both those paths is the puzzle bridge. Correct. Uh, so the forest, or you Still even have the possibility of just 
I mean, Pug's, just speaking on Pug's behalf, I mean, you guys could go all the way back the other way. Because he has interests in Audrey. Um, just as another plot hook, I'm just saying, as your DM, yeah. just letting you know other We'd have to been... backtrack again. Yep. yep. Yeah, and that's not happening. No. Um, because the bridge of knowledge sounds a lot safer to pass than the other bridge. Oh, probably not, but... I mean, one's called Deception's Pass, and the other one's called Dead's Pass. You guys are heading towards Dead's Pass. Mm -hmm. So if that it. sounds safer, then sure. So real? what do you guys do? Yes, yes. Is it real? Yes. <laughs> but if the other one's deception, maybe it's the real dead's pass. <laughs> Dang. Ah, <laughs> God, why are we letting him think for us? <laughs> that was out of character because my character was he not, not about that. that. <laughs> I thought you were going to catch up. Oh, dead's pass. That sounds bad. Let's go this way. <laughs> All right, so what are you guys doing? Deception <laughs> pass. This doesn't sound much better. Uh, is there any? I don't like being lied to, so we'll dead dead's pass. No, we're gonna take the forest path. What was the second uh, one? I mean, yeah, there's, there's nothing keeping us in the city, right? Like, there's no reason for us to stay here anymore. No, not really. We should just fucking leave. Yeah, um, I mean, not really, unless you guys have religious purposes, I would say. That's the only thing you were really going over here. Do I here. want a multi class and a death cleric? Hmm. Or maybe mess oh, with elections, but it's up to you. Mess with elections. That would involve staying in one place, and we can't fucking do that. Oh yeah, because we let those guys live, so we need to. Yeah, we got actually. Yeah. Well, we just couldn't get to them. all of these plot hooks that we have to ignore. Yes, yeah, all these plot hooks that don't really matter, in my opinion. That's D and D, baby. None of it matters. I mean, you can choose. You're not. It's Correct. your choice whether you take them or not. Yeah. Like they don't matter to you if you don't fulfill them That's out. Exactly. Well, Gildor yeah. wants to get Hexwell. Gildor don't care about elections. <laughs> like, or I mean, Bryant does. They or, could if maybe uh, it mattered. You don't know. Right. Yeah, or, or it's hard. To, it's hard for you to say you don't. You don't care about it. Me as a player know. is like, hmm. Me as Gildor is like. Well, what does Gildor want to do? Shit. What does Wade want to do? You guys are in town. What are you guys doing? Gildor wants to get to Hexwell. Yeah, I think we're just leaving. So which which way are you going? That doesn't tell me anything. The forest. We're taking the forest. Take the forest path. The forest path. So you guys are going. Okay. To, to the forest. I need Maybe one person hours. to roll me a d20. And we are past so you guys turn. make it about an hour out of the city, and as you do so, what happens? Uh. Oh, just, just roll a d20. Yeah, roll a d20. Just just roll. Yep. Okay. yep. We get oh, ambushed by a legion of goblins. Not bad. 17. 17 is not bad. Okay, now roll me a d8. I should say it dies. Five? Okay. Okay, so you guys make it through a mountainous pass. As you do so, you start seeing the early states of what looks to be a very, I'd say, dead jungle. As you do so, you make it about three hours outside of where you once were. Walking, as you do so, traveling somewhat slow, you notice that you start hearing noises off as you see a little deep ravine run through. So you're kind of high here. Mm -hmm. You see low ground here. You guys, as you guys start making your way through in this direction, as you guys walk, give me a perception check, everybody. Yeah. 22. Okay. Same. Nice. Fair. Okay. Yeah, uh, was that 20? Unnatural 20? Okay. What am I rolling? Perception. perception. No, that'll be fucking bunch. That'll, that'll be twenty-one. Actually. So pretty much everybody, as you guys are strolling through, you all notice that off over here, you see what looks to be something very small. You notice that it is skinning what looks to be some sort of an animal. You see two smaller individuals, kind of hunched over, darkened under the shade, as it's about almost noon to one-ish, kind of you know, peeling back skin. As you see a blade hunched over. Very small, you're not quite sure what it is. You see them about 60, 70 feet away. As you guys kind of keep walking on down, what do you guys want to do? Do we see a hunched over figure? Yeah, you see him over in like this direction through the How brush. How far is you? 70 feet, 70 feet. I just like this, this is a curious question. Because uh, I was like at the favorite there. terrain thing and yeah, all that. Jungle's not a thing, so it's like, would a jungle be a kind of forest or new? I, I have a jungle. 
Oh, yeah, I actually have a jungle region. Oh, so this is just a forest. This is more or less a mountain with some thick brush. Oh. Okay. Mountainous forest. Yep. Sure. Like stone. Uh -huh. Yeah, but yep. does it act as a forest region for his? Yeah. No, it's, it's a mountain. This is all mountain. You got there's a very small forest in this whole region. Because yeah, I just need to know. Because you, be, all have... it'll be grass if you guys are in forest. Yeah, no, that's fine. Uh -huh. That's fine. I just wonder because you said jungle. I was like, that's not a word on here. I just, so let me ask about that real quick. Nope. Uh, there's a guy. Does he notice us? Nope. They're just skinning some animals. From what you can tell. They're just people. Like actual people. I'm not sure. You can't tell from where you're at. Can't see from uh, what's going on. Careful about it. 70, 70 feet or Yeah, so. 60, 70 feet away. You just see two smaller individuals from what you can tell looks okay. to be doing something to some animal. Uh, well, we could keep going forward and just ignore them because they don't notice us. So we could probably just keep quiet, keep going forward out any issues and yeah get I don't need to have any more bodies yeah we, get to just, the, we can just get to the we bridge can, we can take like a wide wide route wide route yeah probably just trying to avoid Art, like which way are we trying to go are we trying to go that, that way, way that or way this way, that way. like archer is that tree like right up against mountain or is there like this kind of leads this down way. the hill goes down this kind of makes it to the edge and then this goes down and then this is like in the center of the valley and then they kind of get over to the higher end, you know, this kind of dips down in the center right in there. Uh, yeah, so I feel like... Okay, from, so from here, where are we going? Where do we need to go? From right here. From here. We need, this is the end goal. Yep. Yeah, and I was yeah, just saying, we could go around, around the tree. tree. That's yeah, what I'm saying, yeah. Because we yeah, we've got enough shit to do with, right, so let's just keep just going. give me a stealth check as a group. Okay. 20. Uh, 17. This is a check. I got a 2. Oh, so that's a foul. So what uh, What else do you Plank. Twink. Yeah, he's over here. <laughs> Snap. <laughs> Accidentally kicks rock <laughs> into the tree. Yeah. Ooh. 16 plus 6. Good. 20. Okay, so everybody's good. So even though you are allowed, you... And you make it through. You Wait, notice that, that as you guys walk through, the <laughs> figure does not seem to notice, and neither one notices any of your movements. You guys travel for about another two hours... Uh, roll me another d20, John. Yeah. Ooh, 19. Alright, give me a d6 this time. D6. Two. Oh, two. So, you traverse, you traverse for <laughs> a little while longer, and after doing so, you notice that the ground changes. You see the ground go from what once was a reddish stone, and as you get farther north, getting closer towards Hexwell, you see the brownish stone and dirt start transferring. You see the trees, and as you do so, you make your way to about right here. As you stand here, oh shit, would you roll a two? Yeah, 19 and a two. Okay. As you stand here, you see two individuals. Give me a perception check. Um, yep. Me? Everybody, everybody. Seventeen, eighteen. I'm Jeez. sorry. Math hard. Four. Four. <laughs> yep. Four. Sixteen. You guys Seven. see standing off here in the distance. Oh. Two individuals standing next to a horse. You see as they stand next to this horse, it has been killed and gutted. You notice that they have been, what looks like, dismembering it over some time, possibly over the night, and have been eating it. And at this moment, just by looking, you can tell that these two individuals are the same soldiers that you were fighting earlier in the day prior. Wow. These motherfuckers. As you guys are sitting here, you notice looking that they have set up a small camp in a very secluded area, trying to hide themselves within some brush. But as they've done so, you guys have come up in the mountainous area, many not expecting them to have traveled, and you have seen them. Now, after coming upon them, and you wait for just a moment, you see something off in the distance, a slight blue, like almost spherical presence off to the left. As you do so, you see for the first time, this woman. Put her as far, yep, right over there. 
you see just for a moment, she hovers for about five, maybe six seconds, about 10 to 15 feet above the ground. As she does so, you see her trance in for a moment. She sees as she looks directly at this, and then she looks right at you guys, noticing your presence, seeing right where you're at. And after she sees you all and you guys notice her, she <laughs> passes out. You see her, no, not passes out, but passes back out. Well, I was like, oh, okay. Like phases out? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You notice that she was dark skin, complected with black hair, with a white streak running right through her hair. Is it, it was it Storm? <laughs> That's what it's there for, yeah. it's Storm. Yeah. Give, give me uh, the model back. You notice that her, her armor and her attire <laughs> seem to dawn almost like a greenish teal with a yellowish embroidered. What do you guys want to do? You see Pug as he stands, he almost shakes as his oh, hand goes onto his sword. Oh yeah, he's uh, still going. I thought you said he went the other way, so I thought he wasn't with us what? anymore. No, he's sitting there. He's if, if Pug ever leaves, he's taking that crystal with him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or he's yeah, yeah, yeah. ready to leave. Yeah, if he'll let him. Pug is he's gonna be yeah, like, he's, uh, he literally abandoned his everything. He hates in, his uh, life right now. Dark skin, dark hair, he liter- teal. Yeah, like a teal greenish teal and yellow. So you guys want to go, like, tie up the loose ends over there? Yeah, I'm ready to stop killing I think we should. He kind of looks, or at least ask why the fuck they're trying to kill us. So let me... Okay, we know know why. But why do they want the gem so bad? I think we have an idea we know why. We understand they... But what is the true meaning? We understand that. Yeah, yeah, let's ask let's ask Foot Soldier One and Foot Soldier Two the bad guy's <laughs> major plot and his motivations. Cause you know that makes sense that these guys, these random horsemen would know. But who's behind it? We you just know, know rocks. Yodor's kind of an asshole, but I'm with him on this one. <laughs> they are a family. They, they are, are a family, family. yes. Yeah. Which Yeah, but is it like Billy Bob, Billy Joel, or like I'm pretty sure if these were all related, like, rocks so- family members, it wouldn't just be like five fucking horsemen. So no, but maybe they be know like, of a core family member. Hold on. Just my two cents. This whole game we're playing is an information game. We don't know enough, and they know a lot. That's true. So we need to cut down on the information we give, like our real names, and we need to yeah, get- fuck this, you son of a bitch. I mean, you don't get to say that, yo, or we need to get as much information as possible. Killing these guys immediately, while it would certainly feel fucking fantastic, gains us no information. And that's what we need right now. Can we just kill one? If they, we can absolutely kill one. Okay. I'm planning. Ah, oh, it's so uh, good. It makes me a little giddy. <laughs> I can root them in ice. And so... It goes right to that. As soon as we... If, if we take one of them, and they gave us even a fraction of, inform, of useful information, that is more information than we had ten minutes ago. So let's kill one. Let's trap the other one. They can't run away. Uh, and we will strip every piece of information out of them. And then we can kill them. Wouldn't okay. it be better so you use your ice logically first. to keep them both alive and then like split them up and then get both their inputs and see if they differ? We'll make the attempt. Uh, and then we kill them both anyway later? Uh, yeah, at this point Orm is just going to turn into a fucking direwolf. So, mid sentence, he's just like. <laughs> <laughs> so I say, use your eyes to keep in place. I'm gonna use an arrow to shoot one on the fucking head, cause fuck them. All right. So what are you guys doing? I'll give you guys a surprise round. One person connect. You guys can do one thing as a party. What do you guys want to do? Now, does it now? If I wanted to move and teleport, that'd be move teleport bonus action. No, you rhymes. get one move, one action. You don't get one fucking. I'm gonna dump my dick. I don't get my bonus action. Nope. I'm just gonna fucking run towards. Them. I'm 50 fucking. I'm way more 50. I only have well, 50. One, one, How far are they from me? One person gets. How far is this? One action. I'll give one oh. movement and one action. Then I'm. To one person. I'll just. Before we. Uh, so, like, only one head. of us. Yep, so. Yeah. Well, I'm a fucking dire Do whatever you guys want to do. I think I should try and get a shot on first. Or do you think you should try and freeze them first? I can't freeze them from here. You think you should try and get a shot on? Because you have to. You said up. you can use a movement to get close, or just walk. You can walk, can't you? Yeah, but I can't get close enough for a thirty-foot cone attack. Oh, it, oh, that's a cone. I didn't realize that. Yeah. So that's I think off. I probably should. I should sneak up there, stealth it, you know, get to the brush, and then just. Go... So 
I move me up a little bit there. I'd see you make your way away. Well, you want to go down right here? And then. Alright, so you peer out. Hand. Yep. Loose it. Alright, give me a style check. And as, the you, as, you, as you pull back and you noose it, just just to make sure you're quiet Let's moving through the brush. Because they're unaware. Yeah, sure. But give me a stealth check first to make sure they're unaware. Okay, 16 plus 6. Yeah, yeah you're good. So you move through, not snapping any branches. You pull an arrow out and you draw your bow very quietly. 7 plus 6, that's one out of. This is a, you can make this out of bandage. They don't know you're here. Yeah, you can hone in on this. The 7 plus 6. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and then which one are you attacking? this guy first. All right, so as you pull back and you draw, you and you breathe and you wet loose and you, and you see it flying. And then in a moment, you see it just fly just overhead, missing, slamming into the brush. You see both of them immediately. They grab their stuff and in a quick moment, they and they grab, they try and make it towards the horse. What do you guys want to do? The dead horse? The horse is dead. Oh, that's right. Well, I, I mean, they're making it like towards it. They're not like oh, okay. for yeah. cover. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Like they're being shot at, and they have no cover where they're at. So, you guys going into combat? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so give me initiatives here. Do they know where I'm at? They don't know exactly. They know where, you, where it came from. Okay. Finally, a good initiative. What'd you roll? 12. What did you roll, everybody? 10. 20, 23. All right, so Arum, and let me just make sure here in the row there's. Bada bing! Ooh. Hey, okay, so I actually get to go. What'd you roll? Ten. Ooh, what'd you roll? Eighteen. Okay. Yeah, we should have done the hyena. That was nineteen. I rolled an eighteen. Should have done the I'm hyena done. for flavor. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> We're in. Yeah. The enemy roll. Sage. Alright, on to you, Arm. both got more than 19. Or 19 and 18. And they have more decks than me, so the tie. <clears throat> Wait a minute. They have no, 19 that's and 18? What I rolled. Oh. 10, 15, 15. And they probably have like two decks minimum. 50. And 20. 20. 20. 30. Okay, uh, I'm gonna use my action to dash. Which gives me 100 feet. Okay. Uh, and so I'm. that'll put me. Between them and the horse. Huh? Keep between them and the horse. And the horse, horse is dead. dead. It's using it. They're trying to get to it for cover. Yeah, it's like right him. in front of them. Right so here? I just realized yeah. he has sharpshooter, so that cover doesn't matter. Never mind. Correct. Yeah, it's. Um, uh, it's literally like right here? Yep. It's just like a maybe ten feet. In front Give of me the moose. Oh, okay. It's not gonna really do anything to your movement. Don't okay, worry that, about that's it so much. no. I'm just I'm gonna go opposite horse. Yep. So if they Perfect. run towards the horse. Yep. There you go. Perfect. Was, yeah. Perfect. Uh, so like, where's the moose? I'm, I want opportunity to attack. Gotcha. Yeah. If they move towards it. Just just for something. Uh, I don't think I have a. So a as you move up, here, so. I will tell you that they look exhausted. Good. Like as you move up, you can see that something, whatever it was. Or whatever it was throughout the night has kept them, and they don't seem as if they have been able to possibly even have rest since then. You see wounds still bleeding in some cases, and as you approach, one of them almost falls back, stammering, and he winces as it seems that they've acquired new wounds since your last fight. Mm -hmm. Act. Good. We'll see you in my turn. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah, you dash, sir. Yeah. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. So. The first one, he turns, and as he does so, he pulls up a place. Please, I will surrender if you promise not to kill my brother and I. We are very, very weak, no, we and we just want passage home. We got our questions. Now we want to do that. Uh, I'm a hyena, and, like a mechanical hyena, and so uh, I'm gonna uh, laugh, and oh, there's gonna be oh. hints of like gears whirring. Well, he's gonna hold his attack. Uh, and so is this guy. And uh, so, yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna immediately do anything. So they hold their action. You hear one of them, call off your beast. One pulls out their dagger and they hold him. We have no more weapons. We wish to not fight. We are not a worthy opponent at this state. And now it is Gildor, sir. Oh, no. <laughs> 
Yeah. I am back to a skelly man, correct? Yep. Yeah, that's the pastor right there. Yeah, wait, that's it. You guys are five I'm hours I'm just gonna, like, yell at them to put down their weapons. As soon as you say that, they drop them. The other man immediately drops his crossbow to the side. He sits there and he drops almost to his back. He sits there, Cough, you beast, please! We wish nothing more! We can converse! Even take the animal! Take the food that's left! Please! The animal understands human speech, so you're pretty safe right now, if I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> Alright, so, end of your turn. Perrin, what do you want to do? Uh, I'll stay there, but I'm gonna... Keep it notched. Got you. Yeah, All just right. in case. Fuck this, what do you want? We'll just kind of keep it in track. Wait, I'll da- I'll, I would have dashed. Just you can move up. It's kind of yeah. free a little bit. I, gonna just close. Close. I was going to dash at least and get yep. as close as I can. All right. And you can move up farther. You can fully engage. We're kind of <laughs> in or out of combat, you know. Okay. If, like, surrender, but we're just going to keep this turn order to keep it civil. Yeah, I'll just... Uh... As you approach, they completely. They even try out. moving. I'm gonna notch an arrow. All right, leg. we we give. What, what do you wish? Take us as prisoners, and they just hold out their hands. If you take us anywhere, please just make sure that letter makes it to the Rock's family. They will pay whatever bounty, and we will make it back home. I'm sure. <laughs> and he kind of chuckles. Does anybody else have rope? I have, yeah. I, yeah. Ha- I have rope, but I'm just currently a big dog. Alright, well, I have what? The rope is like 50 feet? Yeah. Yeah. Plenty. For now, I guess I'll just like tie them both up together. Right, so you tie one up and you cut it after about six feet and then you tie the other one up and do the same. They had a letter? Did I miss something? They don't have a letter. Oh. If you're going to tie them up and when prison them send a letter back. Oh, okay. So that way someone at least knows they're in prison. Oh, okay. So you know, rules of nobles and all that. Nobles. <laughs> so you guys have them tied up. What do you guys wish to do? You have the one looking that seems to have been the captain as he turns and he looks at you. Please, my men you have killed is just my cousin and I left. Hmm. I thought it was his brother. No. Nope. Well, they call them brothers. I'm... They're brothers of the rocks, but they're, this is his actual cousin. I have brought him along. He is a new initiate. He just earned his cloak. I wish to see him dead. If you are to take a life, may it be mine. Now, if you have any questions, let us talk. And he kind of steps forward. This one, the one that was speaking in the first place. He is too young to know much of what you might wish to know, so. And he looks over. Sit down, Jonathan. It'll be all right. (laughs) (laughs) So as you guys look around, you notice that there seems to be nothing. It's very quiet. It's about 6 p.m. It's starting to get a little dusk. What do you guys want to do? You have two prisoners before you. I'm going to say, why are you trying to kill us? Uh, as Jonathan sits down, I'm going to make my way behind him okay. and sit down. Now, I'm a, I am a large creature, yep. and so I'm going to sit, like, uncomfortably close behind him. <laughs> Breathe on him or something? Yeah, essentially, yeah. Like, my head is directly over his head. You That's ask what? why we are trying to kill you. The easiest answer is that I have been tasked by the Rock's family to track down certain members and have located a certain gem within a tomb, or at least some temple that we think believed that there was another gem located. The family has one already in their possession. They are trying to acquire the others. The family is quite in an uproar recently. There's been, I'd say, miscommunication between the father and his oldest son on what they are going to do with the acquisitions if they do find these gems. So, where or not these, I'd say, orders are really coming from, it's hard to tell. But we take what comes in letter. 
That letter last week told me that I was coming after you six. You hear him in the back of his pocket, a small parchment ruffles. You notice it as you take it out, you see it, and literally there's like small jotting downs of your names, descriptions, and small pictures drawn. See, that was what we were given. We were also given locations in which you were all traveling. We have had people following you. Might have a paper that got my nose wrong. <laughs> we know that you are in possession of a certain gem, or at least a portion of it. We know that others and we know that others are also trying to track it down as well. If there are others like you trying to find it, then we must find it before them. Why are the rocks so interested? Well, I think it once was just fun and games, maybe a power struggle, flex, one would say over the other regions, showing their power that they could find these long-lost legends and these myths, turning them real. But I think recently, the oldest son possibly is trying to show that he is able to take over the Rock's family's name after his father, well, I guess, declines power. See, with us giving the other regions safety, Rocks gains secret power. We may not need to win all the elections in all four regions, but we have sway in many of them. We can tip who wins, if you know what I mean. We can get people in the positions that we need them to be in to get things done in the way that we need them to be done. Whether or not you die or not is not a care to me. I get paid bringing back my quest complete. I have failed. My life is more valuable than coin this week. But I will tell you that there are other many things happening than just your heads needed to be made. There are things happening in Hexwell. We know that you are heading in this direction. We have seen the pigeon dropping a message. There have been others <laughs> that we have intercepted that have not made it to you. We have seen what has been going on, and I know that what lays there are machines that are being operated on that may cause conflict. But to go there, maybe people there that you once knew that maybe are tied up in things that they cannot explain. It's been a couple years since you've been there, yes? And I will tell you that over the last couple of years, Things have changed. He spits out a little bit of blood. You met the tiefling. I know you did. You know some things of what I speak of are true. So the rocks have no idea what to do with these gems. They just want to find them. I don't want to say they don't know. But I think... One of the oldest, and he kind of looks down. He knows. The oldest son of Tor Rocks. He has mischievous <coughs> plans, I think, if he can get all of the gems acquired. The father, Tor, I think he wants to just disperse power at some point. I think he knows that his reign of time is coming to an end soon. With that, I think he wants peace, or to at least give the other regions the power to be able to defend for themselves, to fight off whatever is causing these abominations. <coughs> Our good questioning boy is a dog right now. I had a feeling that one. Uh, all right. Yeah, I got questions. At this point, uh, I will drop the the fucking form. Yep. So you S pop back. Yeah, I'm still behind. What's his face? Yep. Uh, oh, that's not. I'm way over here. Uh, uh, and uh, I'm gonna put uh, as I 
unshape shift. I'm gonna put one hand on Jonathan's shoulder. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna pull a dagger. I'm not, I'm not I'm gonna have it. Right. That's gonna go <clears throat> like on the other shoulder. Asshole. <laughs> um. You know of a conversation with a tiefling. You know of pigeons, random pigeons, appearing seemingly out of nowhere. Yes. How? How do you know more than you should? Well, and he kind of looks over at his cousin. We have inner workings in Hexwell. We have people working with us. We have many spies in many regions. And when the messages are sent, we watch for them. We know that the messages are magically attuned to your locations. So as long as we intercept them, they never make it to you. He pulls out and you see in the back of his pack, you can see that there's at least four papers. Mm. Are they all the same? Seems to be similar, different writings and whatnot, but... She's, she's probably, I mean, oh, you got her. <laughs> but for the, for the most part, I mean, do you want to look at them? Uh, not right now. We'll just put them off to the side. Um, okay. I'll just tell you that I know that they were trying to get word. Some people that spoke of things happening recently, these new incantations that have been discovered has stirred up many people. And uh, let's just say... We found some things there, and we have had to make sure that they were not found. We've had to keep them under wraps from the public. It seems that everywhere we go, there are members of the Rocks family. Maybe not right away, but soon after. If needed, yes. Y'all fuck I'm like in the dead. Y'all fuck like rabbits or something? <laughs> It... <laughs> You're all related, it's kind of weird. How can a family so dedicated to fighting off abomination after abomination, their, their capital in the midst of a, of a monster ridden land, how can they afford to spend so much time on four fucking schmucks? For one gem. He's got a point. Oh, kind of laughs. Actually, with the monsters, how can they spend so much time monopolizing anywhere. air travel? Too? Yeah, anywhere. He, really. he laughs to himself. And controlling all these political and elections. You guys don't actually remember this out of character, but before when we did the prequel, do you guys remember all the people that were coming up missing? Yeah, but that wasn't us. Right, but I'm saying. Yes, uh, I know. The this is what he's about to. Yeah. This is about what he's going to explain. Uh huh. But after the cloud regions have been formed, even before they were forming, Tall Rocks saw this happening. He started, I don't want to say stealing or kidnapping, but started taking great women and men, stealing them from noble families, producing over the last 75 years. Jesus Christ. Many of an army, surplusing people taking those refugees. He kind of looks, he's like, <laughs> do you only think that the continent of Aldris could come up on a couple hundred airships? The rest of them, <laughs> we brought them up ourselves, prisoners. We made them fight. We put spear in hand. We gave them no other option. We told them this was the only way. They don't even know of the other regions, some of them. They lay waste, dying to waves of abominations that cloud themselves, hordes that flood over the regions. That is how. Plus, we do have the power of one of the gems in our possession. What power it possesses, I do not know, but I can tell you that the family has grown quite heavily influenced in the regions over the last 70 years because of it. They are the only ones that show it publicly and show the force and the power that they have to everyone and let it know the airships why do you think we only let them go in one stream not because we can't go the other way but to show that we control it 
but you must go at our pace so we can watch who goes. Airships only come a couple days so that way we can see who's waiting so if there's someone there we can catch up to them. We have full control over the regions. It's only a matter of time before we found you. You would have to hide within caves and mountains for the rest of your life. Even the hidden void, maybe not, would save you. Barren as it may, that may not even. So, what will you do with us? We want our lives, and we want to make it home. And home is where the rocks are, yes? Yes. Well, unfortunately for you, the rocks are kind of our enemy. Well, if you want to go to our enemy, it makes you our enemy. Oh, also, we're not nobles. Some of that, like, actually, those rules that you're spouting matter at all to us. The other one speaks up. How about this? We'll help you cross the bridge. What are they saying? Can I shoot them yet? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, they're the next bridge to Hexwell, Dead Pass. Is there a town uh, at the entrance of it? There is a small one. And I assume the rocks control it as well. We do not control it, but we have heavy influence. Okay. And the rocks should have very little influence on the bridge itself, correct? No one has any ownership of any bridges that I know of. Those are a magical essence within themselves. You say you'll help us cross the bridge. I will. We have to get to the bridge. Now, to get to the bridge, odds are we're going to uh, face some rocks. Possibly. Almost certainly. You are. You literally told me that you are everywhere. Uh, and that the only way to avoid you is hiding in a, in a cave for the rest of my life. So I will <laughs> see a fucking rock sky between here and there. Uh, you have been hounding me for weeks now. And it's getting a little old. Um, and so... What, you, what... Your life means very little to me right now. And all that does is as soon as we run into a rocks individual, that makes you a liability. It makes you a knife in my back. So, you're gonna have to do better. How about this? Currently, the lieutenant of the party that was sent out to capture you. We knew that you were heading towards Northros. If I turn you in with my cousin, lead you into town, say we have captured you, we go through town and say that you are too dangerous to take via airship. I think that maybe you may hijack it. I want to take you via foot. And we head through the bridge. That's a lot of trust to give you. Well, what is it? Is you sit here, you know I've told you, you want me to lead you into town, if there are rock soldiers there, I can at least get you past them, for sure. Or, you kill me now and take your chances. Have it now! I heard kill! Can I shoot yet? I understand I'm still in the distance. I mean, Gildor doesn't care. Gildor isn't undead. So, like, I'm fine either way. I do not have a problem turning on the rocks, as long as it saves my life and my cousins. That is what I wanted to hear. Like I said, I can help you get to the bridge, possibly even past it. But if we make it past it, we go our separate ways. I'm going to give you this one. If you fuck up, I, will, I won't kill you. I will kill your cousin. I will do it in front of you. I will ruin him. And that will be blood on your hands. Alright. And then I will kill you. You hear that, Jonathan? No monkey in this time. It means business. Our lives are on the line. 
Now, you look at them both, and they're both still quite wounded. All right, so, we're actually about to try and eat and then head out here soon. I'm gonna run a medicine check on both of them. Okay. 25. Yep, so the first one. Do you need two, one. or do you need Yep, one? two. So for the first one, he's good. The second 20. one, yep, so you're good. So you both men, then they're, they're stable. They don't seem to be bleeding. They're bandaged up. Yep, they seem to be at least somewhat healthy for the time being. Not so, creeped out that like a skeleton sitter like fucking bandages. <laughs> like, like, as he does. Oh, the dead guy is doing the medicine. <laughs> he turns. Thank yeah. you. Now, my name is Tyrion. And like I said, we are actually part of the Rocks family. I'm Tyrion Rocks. Tyrion Rocks? Yes. And over there is Jonathan Rocks. And both of us, we thank you very much. Now, you can leave us bound when we get outside of the passing, when we get to Dead Men's Pass. You need to cut my restraints and Jonathan's so that way they understand that you are our soldiers. We might even need to put you in restraints to sell a bit. Now, do you guys do anything before you guys start heading off? You guys have about a day and a half's travel before you guys will get there. Can I make a... You have more wounds than what I recall leaving you with yesterday. Oh, yeah, well, there was some, uh, ran into some of the painted faces. I got some ogres that they're working with. They seem... Something's not right with them. But... We're not sure. That's a whole nother can of worms that are a little bit low on my list at this current time. But yes, I fought one ogre. It actually took five of us to bring it down. We met up with a couple others and had about six of us. One fled and the other three died. We were able to run away and make camp here. We're tired and we needed warmth for the night, so out here in the desert before it got cold. We had to cut and make camp and eat the horse. If I describe to you a dark-skinned woman, dark hair, white streak in her hair, uh, with a, a teal slash yellow clothes of some kind, a spellcaster, does that I do ring not, any bells? I don't know a black woman, or maybe the hair, but the teal and yellow, yes. That sounds like uh, one of the sorcerers or wizards of Hexwell. Why do you say something of that nature? Don't worry about that. All right, then. I'll do as you say. And he kind of turns and he looks at Jonathan and he gives a nod. And they both kind of start trekking off in the direction towards Dead Pass. You guys gonna do anything else? Are you good? I'm good. All right, so you guys group up. You kind of stay. My a, mask back on. Yep, you guys stay a little bit behind them, and under night, you guys travel. As you do so, you make it about a day and a half. You take a break in between. You gather your night. You sleep. You take watches. Very quiet. But then you make your way through. As you do so, you start making your way, and as you do, the temperature starts dropping. From where normally the entire time in Geom you've been, it's been around 55, 60 degrees. The closer you get to Dead's Pass, it starts dropping to about 30, 32 degrees, getting to be a little close to frigid. You start noticing that as you get closer to it as you approach, you start seeing the mists and the clouds start picking up immensely. Now, as you guys get closer, you notice that the shades of the flooring start to go from a brownish to a more whitish as the ground starts to become a little bit more dried and crackled. As you guys do so, you guys enter a very basic city, as you see about a mile out. As you guys look off in the distance, you see a pass, Dead Man's Pass. 
read a sign. You guys make your way closer. You see that there's fog that is so thick, you stop about a couple hundred feet before the wall, and you see the city almost like it would vanish from you the closer you get. You guys make it to about 100 feet out, and the visibility is about 50 feet at max from what you can see. As you do so, you guys get there, and the food becomes to be so thick you can almost taste it within your mouth as you breathe, and you taste the moisture that is hanging in the air. Now, as you guys enter, you guys make it, there is no wall as you guys walk up to this city. Should it we, seems uh... to be very small and mundane. What do you guys wish to do? Should I take like some of my rope, like make it like put some na like gnashes in it though, so just in case things go wrong, we just easily just snap it and all that, and then cut those guys loose to make it look like they got us or something. Well, before I left the room, you said that at some point we had to stop and take a rest. Yep. But like a short rest? Yeah, you guys, you guys travel for a day and a half. You get a long rest. Oh, yeah, Everybody sweet. get a long rest. Hell yeah. yeah. You guys all get a long rest. Nothing happened. Nothing crazy happened. Okay. Now, as you guys make your way, you guys see that there's another small, very barren town. Many tents. Another gateway. And as you guys enter, you guys stand, I'd say about 50 feet away. And the fog is so thick and immense that you can only see about 50 feet in front of your face. The moisture hangs, and as you see another gate very similar to very many of the others, built in a very similar manner, standing. You notice that on the other side of the walls, you can see tents starting to erect as snow starts to fall. Guys, I'm on the other side! You see before you two elven men posture themselves on top of the wall and then come down, not speaking, but coming on the outside of the wall. As they stand there, you see, no, go ahead. When I get, when I, before we got this close, mm -hmm. I would have started altering myself okay. back into the scrag. Yep, so about again. five to six minutes out, you start altering yourself. Now, as you guys make your way up, you guys are not completely all the way up, and you see that Jonathan and his, um, Cousin, look at you, and he, he turns. We need possibly bind your arms. There are rock soldiers, or if we are going to truly sell this, you need to be my prisoners. Ah, so we're going to do that, though. We're going to do it my way, and we're going to use my rope, where I put a little gnash in it, so just in case if things go wrong, we can snap out. That's fine. We just need to sell it. He pulls out some rope. You can tie yours if you wish. But you need to be my prisoners at least for this. Oh, I'm gonna tie everybody else. You won't touch. Fine. Now, you spend about, I'd say about 10 minutes just going through, notching everybody's ropes. We're everybody making a weekend out just in case we can snap yep, out. Yeah, so you guys can all break out. So, you guys all tie them up and you guys all walk in in front. He takes the back and the youngest one steps up in front. You guys make your way forward. You guys do not speak at first, and then the guards address. So do we, <clears throat> we have some refugees or oh, prisoners here, Jonathan? Uh, we have some prisoners, seems the ones that uh, we were after in our last passage through. But this time, we're hoping to bring them back, and I uh, even think Cousin said on foot. And you tell that both of their faces kind of look a little discerned, and then they immediately open the gate. As they do so, you guys start making your way in. As you guys make your way in, you see a very basic city. Mundane in pretty much all aspects, other than you can tell that there are some shops. Merchants here definitely trying to make a penny. They can tell that many people are trying to get to Hexwell, as that is the next stop from this place. You either go by bridge or you go by air. That is the next main destination north from this area. You see people trying to sell maps of what they believe the bridge to be. You see tons of stories being told just in your small travels through the center of this town. Oh, the, the bridge, it's, it's full of lies. 
You know, you hear people telling them that that's where their religious God lives and they're being sent there to sanctify and rectify those that need to be worshipped. You hear many stories throughout your traverses. And as you guys look over the looming passage, you see a small bridge off through the end of the town, not covered by any guard or by any gate, but just looms off into the mist. You see an airship that seems to have passed over your head and starts heading into the mist. You see none other taking the docking station. Seems that that was the last ship to have left dock. As you guys sit in town, he turns to you and Tamriel says, All right, I need to keep this under wraps. Let's make it to the bridge. Normally, we do so without being noticed. Now, as you guys all walk through town, I need deception checks by everybody. Because I top off my one. 20. All right. Eight. Fifteen. Wait, now, why did we just change say you say deception an or perception? Deception. Because the last time I that's used one. wild shape to do that's that. That's funny. All right. Me, like, so, fuck me. as you no. guys... Make it. I'm gonna hold on. Okay, so you guys start. One. You guys start making it through town. As you guys do so, you guys make it through about seventy-five, from what you can tell, percent of the town. And then, as you do so, you start passing one of the last major buildings off into what you can see to be the last void, into where you can tell to be the bridge, towards the bridge, or excuse me, towards the last passage, towards the bridge. As you guys start making your way, you see an individual kind of step out from the crowd, noticing Jonathan and his cousin. He has a cloak and he stands. What are you doing here? He's behind, he nods and motions. Put them all by yourselves, just the two of you. It's not to be noticed, we're taking them back now. I'm going to travel by bridge. Don't say anything. Don't cause a bother. Come with you then. And you see that Jonathan starts stepping forward towards the individual. You hear very small back and forth, and then you see Jonathan get pushed by this individual. That is not your place. If these are all the prisoners that are supposed to go back, why are we not taking them by airship? There's procedure. If they are too powerful, we shall wait for reinforcements and take them and lock them away in prison cell. At this point, you see the tensions are starting to rise. Tamriel turns and he looks back at you, noticing that this individual is being a little bit tough. He says it once more. Tamriel, I've told you this before. Protocol, I'm going to turn you in. You did this once before with the other children. Now these prisoners. You're weak. So what is it going to be? Them? Or the family? And at that moment, you see him turn and as he looks back, he slides a blade down his wrist and he just thrusts it right into this dude's abdomen. As he does so, he holds the body up. He turns back to you. Run. You have to make it towards the bridge. It must not cause a commotion. But run! What do you guys do? You run? I'm gonna start power walking you. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna sprint. Right, but you... So you guys yeah. start stealthily moving. Jonathan and him take the body. He looks at his cousin, eyes wide like, holy shit. He starts leveraging the body with his cousin as they start walking, carrying the body. As they do so, they make it to about the edge of the building. And at this point, they see that they're past most of the crowds. And they just throw the body towards the side. You hear, Ugh, uh. At this point, you hear a hand. He goes up, and, it, and the body just disappears into a swirl of snow. And vanishes out of sight. We must run. Pick up. You see Tamriel and his cousin. They start, boom, boom. You start running. You guys pick up with them. Speedwalk broke completely running now. He casts it and he whistles. You hear this whoosh, it almost like a lot of piercing noise, and all of your movements just pick up like times four. 
You heard this once on the horseback within the fight, and your guys is almost like run just gallops through. You guys run for about 400 yards, and then pure darkness and mist emits you. It's about 8 to 9 p.m. now, and you guys can see the closer you get to the bridge, the colder it gets. You can start seeing your breath way in front of you, almost like frigid on your lips. And as the fog and the mist emits around you, you can only see maybe 20 to 15 feet in front of you. As you guys have ran, you guys see now as you have stopped a very narrow gap way. As without through all the running and everything you have done, you almost lost track of what you were doing. And as you do so, you make your way to here. And at this point, hang on one second, you see this. You guys make it to this pathway. Alright. Fog is so thick that as you guys peer around, you see maybe 15 to 20 feet in front of you guys. You hear nothing. Just a small swirling of wind emanating as you guys walk out onto this basic stone bridge. You can barely see the stone at the beginning of your feet and as you turn back, you don't even see the city. You see nothing but a thick mist fog. Emrya and Jonathan, they look at you in the quietness. All right, we've made it this far. What do we do now? We held up our end of the bargain. Now we gotta get across this bridge. So, at this point, move you guys up, get rid of this, set this up, yep. You guys can go here, here. All right. All right, so, at this point, you guys make your way onto the bridge. What y'all want to do? It's all dark. Very Can't dark. see much about you. Very dark, and you guys can see about 25 feet in front of you at max. But you just see pure fog. You see a bridge that is about uh, 20 feet in width, 15 to 20 feet in most parts. And as you look around, you just see mist. That's about it. Uh, I'm gonna take a torch. Uh, torch number eight. I was just making sure. All right, so you off. you kind of pull it out. It emanates a little bit of light, and you notice that it barely increases your vision a little bit. I'm gonna toss it forward. All right, so you kind happens. of it tosses, and as it does so, you see it kind of burning, but it doesn't really illuminate anymore. The fog is so thick, it just kind of burns there, not really illuminating more. It's just thick fog. Uh, I guess we should move forward. Yeah, yeah in a bitch. All right, what's your marching order? through a thing in the fog? Yeah, the torch didn't do much though. Alright, so as you move up, you see that it kind of continues on a little bit. You see a little bit farther into the fog as you see it continually going straight. You see the pathway stays about 20 feet wide as you move forward. Pug kind of turns and he looks at you. What? What are we going to do? I know this bridge. I don't even know what's on it, or how long it is. It is the journey, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess this is one way of doing it. Well, worst case scenario, you all starve to death, and me and Orm make attacks while eventually... Ha 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 ha, dead humor. Uh, <laughs> yeah, cause you guys need to eat food like losers. Solve a lot of my problems, honestly. All right, so as you guys make it up, what are you guys doing? Uh, Walk, walking, I guess. I mean, yeah, I, I got was, nothing else to add. So I mean, if there's just, I mean, there's, if there's literally just, 
have no fog in spells. front of us. Fog and bridge. There's not a lot we can do. We can go at half pace just to make um, health checks. Yep. So that way we don't just immediately like walk off a fucking cliff yep. by accident. Um, but I mean, like other than that. Go. Alright, so you guys moving up? Yeah, we're just moving up. Right. Uh, so you guys move up, I'll say 10 feet. As you guys move up 10 feet, you see a small gap kind of breach over. And you see a small gateway that kind of appears here and here. You can move your models up to about right here. As you guys see them, you see that there are two gates. As you look at them, they're not barred, they're not chained. They kind of both just kind of creak and swing in the wind, both open. As they kind of just and sweep back and creep back and forth. You see in front of you a statue. It's broken and brittled, but in front of it, you notice that there's words. As you look at this, you can kind of read through it. I need to know if anybody can read your conic. Elvish. Yep. Yep. Um, okay. So, as you look at it, you see this. Towns without any houses. Mountains without rocks. Forests without trees. And seas without water. What am I? You see this etched into the stone. I'm reading this out loud. To right in front of you. Yep. I mean, I can read too. I'm elf. And he's a direct dragonborn. Yep. You guys see this rope right in front of you on the wall, just kind of etched. He's not literate. Maybe he's at least literate. I can, Barely. I can read. Yeah. Not a complete fucking invalid. <laughs> yeah. That is what you read. I think it's six minimum to read. Yeah, that's pretty you're, good. You're good. Uh. I can't remember half that. Towns one. without any houses, mountains without rocks, forests without trees, and seas without water. What am I? Empty? You say that and nothing happens. Give me an intelligence check. Somebody, one person. I'm the smart one. Are you proficient? Fucking have an axe like it. What? Uh, wisdom. Yeah. Okay. It's twelve. Oh yeah. I will say that Ooh, by smart. that by looking at it, you can discern that it might be something somebody makes about these things. Towns without any houses. Mountains without rocks. Forests without trees and seas without water. What are those but without the actual physical entity? Yeah, I got nothing to argue for. Hold on. Give me a second. Towns without houses. Mountains without rocks. Forests without trees and seas without water. They're nothing. They're. Trees? I mean, they're just empty land. Incomplete. Land. Um, this, is, this is a tough one. Nothing. But both ways are still open. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. just there is this riddle before you. All right, give me another intelligence check. Somebody else. Um, I would like to. Cast enhance ability. Give okay. myself advantage on intelligence checks. Okay. Um, let's see if that fucking stirs. And I, I'll see shit. if Pug can aid you. Please yeah, Pug can aid you. 100%. No, that would just give me a uh, Fucking that one. That one. This is just straight intelligence. Mm hmm. Uh, 11 plus. Oh, that advantage. Hold on. Uh, yeah, but then you get plus two. Oh, well, that's a natural 20. Oh, nice. 
Um, I will say that you can discern that this riddle has something to do with what is almost wrote about these things, or written, or drawn, possibly. What do you... What are towns without houses? What are you looking at? Huh? What are towns without houses? What? Uh, yeah, that, that, that paper right in front of you. Well, oh, it's a map! <laughs> and as you say the word map... Ah, piss. Towns without houses. Mountains oh, okay. without rocks. See, oh, okay. Sure. And as you, you say that, you see on the wall in front of you a small crack of the rest of this crumbling statue. And at the base of it, you see a crack and the stone just kind of fall. And as you see underneath it, you see these two lines wrote in every language that can be understood. The high road may be of haste, but with danger it is laced. The other road that lays low can be good if you go slow. Those are the two things that you see. And what, one of these goes up and one of these goes down? They both go left and right. Uh, excuse me. So it is more or less, I'd say, uh, up to you to discern. I will say that this one, from what you can tell, seems to, yes, be the higher elevated one, possibly. The other one seems to be low. The high road may be of haste, but with danger it is laced. The other, the road that lays low, could be good if you go slow. Now you said the one on this one appears to be elevated. Elevated lower. Okay. Um Pug just kinda turns. The hell's going on? Mm -hmm. What are we gonna do? You got a can you got a water skin? Yeah. Do you? Mm -hmm. Can you, uh, can you pour a little bit of water out on the lower road? Okay. Okay. I'll come over to the right side road and just take yeah. a skin out and dip a little bit on there. God damn, you're smart. Yeah, I am. As you I'm good. At, I'm good at problem solving. You shit notice that shit as it shit. looks as if it would I don't run do down. You notice that it comes back towards you and it starts running. Towards the other side, and you Correct. see from the low path, How the fuck it leads back towards the high path. Good at problem solving. And it looks as if it almost starts flowing in the opposite direction. Oh. Yeah, we went the low path, so follow the water. <laughs> low and slow, baby. Yeah. So. Parkas is right. <laughs> as he looks at you, Puck says, okay, so. Left. Yeah, yeah. If that's where the water goes, yeah. Well, yeah. So you guys start making your way through, and you. And you walk on through. As you do so, you make this choice. As you go, you hear behind you the gate <laughs> close. Mm -hmm. And as you do so, you see the wall enveloped <laughs> in stone lace all the way down, enveloping the gate, closing it off. Full stone wall. Mm -hmm. You've made your choice. There's no going back. As you make your way, about another 20 minutes of slow paced walking, you find that there's this passageway. You find another narrow passage in the dark. And about halfway through, you can see that not only is part of it darkened, Notice that there seems to be some sort of gap almost between the two. A solid 15 to 20 feet gap, the jump is lower. The next pathway you see beneath you is about 10 to 15 feet lower in between this gap. As the party makes their way up and through, you guys notice as you make your way up to it that it seems as if to just be an empty pit. As you walk over, you see Puggy kind of leans over the edge and looks down. How big is the gap? It seems to be about 15 to 20 feet from what you can tell, and it's lower. About 15 to 20 feet lower, so 
Possibly if you jumped, you might be able to just make it down. Possibly. I'm not quite sure. It's all the, that you can really well, see. Who can throw a rope at me? So I can I, teleport this guy. I can throw a rope. Right. Yeah. Or he can transform into a tiny animal and he can just toss him. That's the other solution. But, I mean, yeah. But that's a wild shape. Right. Right. And teleport's less important than wild shape. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so I teleport. Right, I can't so, reach my guy. All right, here. Jake, take him and put him over and then just... All right, so as you go to the edge and you attach her up to your waist, yeah? Uh, I don't think that would work. Yeah, you, you guys are going this way. It's the other way. You're going that way. Is there anything to, like, tie the rope to on either side? No. It's a bridge. Now, as you, now, as you go to teleport, you make it about halfway, and then you... You hit this magical wall, and your literal body just stops. In a moment, your body swings. The rope catches on. Who's holding it? Uh, I'll grab it. Yeah, he had the rope. So I'll be behind him. Give me a strength check just to make sure. As your body just kind of hints and blimps, and then as you go down, it kind of and you feel this magical wall force going all the way through. 11. 11, you hold him. He doesn't weigh that much. You, you kind of feel his body go tight, and then you kind of feel him, and you start pulling him slowly back up to the edge. You climb your way back up, and you realize that there's something possibly blocking this passageway. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start, uh, like, checking the walls, see if there's any buttons. Any there's no walls, it's just base. Oh, really? Yeah, you guys are just base platform. Interesting. Yep. No walls. Well, I'll start tap dancing. Do the exact same thing, but just with the floors. You start tap dancing. You you kind of you hear sounds echoing through. Nothing crazy. Okay. Um. So there's. Uh. You, you described this magic force field. Uh. You said it goes. This way. This way. Seems to be going. You're not sure. I didn't, I didn't quite way. understand what he tries your to like was. pass through, teleport yeah. through, and it seems it was halfway through. There's some magical field that stops his magical like ability to go through it. Okay. Oh. 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 Okay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take a. Fucking. I don't know. I got cell phone. Sure. Oh, I do. I have a ball bearing. I have a thousand of them. I have fucking a bunch of this. I'm gonna take a ball bearing. Just chuck it. All right. So, kind of pull it back. And you chuck it, and as it goes, it goes about, I'd say, 10 feet, 15 feet, and it kind of hits this invisible wall. But then you see it, and it kind of goes down, and unlike Gildor's body, the magical force, this physical form just kind of softly goes down, and you hear it thump, into something that you can't physically really see. And then you see it slowly just roll, boom. Boom, boom, down in increments, boom, down about 15 of these, and then it lands on the other side of the base of the bridge. Okay. Alright. Yeah, who wants, to, who wants to take a leap of faith? Fuck it, I'll wrap a rope around my waist, boys, I'm, I'm going over. Okay. I think we should all go, I don't think there's another option besides leaving. Actually, no, we were closed in. This is it. I mean, we I mean, we could just be wrong. So let's just do one, and then if that works, then we do everyone else. Okay. All right, so you tie a rope around your waist? Mm -hmm. All right, now, what are you doing exactly? Are you going jumping? Are you going and walking? Because it, 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 it made a cross, and it started to go down, 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 down. Just take it made it to the, the base of this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We, we, First, I'm going to try just stepping off. We can let you down. Easy. Okay, you so said it was like 15 feet. He goes, and as you slowly step and you go to walk, you feel something solid underneath your feet. Four oh, barrels. Guys, oh. there's a floor here. Oh, keep going, keep going, keep going. I take another step. So while he's got a rope around him, I'm gonna be holding it. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Right. Your, your next <laughs> step, you go nice, slow, and steady, and you feel boom, almost like this mist form step form right beneath your foot, nice and steady. Okay. Right about here, yep. Okay. yep. 
So you got about, I'd say about 13-ish, 14 maybe-ish more steps oh, that you can and see. And here and then down, down, down to that. No, well, you just go straight down if you want, yeah. From what you can tell, it seems as if you're just ball walking bearing, straight yeah. at it. Uh, so I'm gonna take, I'm just gonna keep cautious, keep going slowly but surely, just one step, so, like tapping a little bit. you very slowly make your way, you watch Perrin walk on this invisible set very slowly down, and then you see him land on the last step and turn and cements himself planted and he's okay. You see no steps, but you just watched him walk down them very slowly. Like the riddle told you. Oh. That's the last time I'm gonna give you a hint too. Yeah. Also, maybe we should avoid two people on the scene. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. No, I think we should do one at a time. One I think if you, you just untie the rope, you yeah, bring the tow, back. rope back. Just we don't remember, really need the rope anymore at this point. It says. I mean, if you the wanna... road that lays low could be good. Yeah. If you go slow. Yeah. Um, and so. I mean, if you want to just walk out there with absolutely no tether, go for it, bud. I'll do it slowly. <laughs> Alright, if you make it across, I'll go to next. Alright, okay. slowly. So, yeah, you, you kind of step out, and at first you're... And you feel... Oh, and then you feel it. And then you make your way slowly across. You feel butterflies in your stomach, yeah. don't you? It's great! Each step, you're just like, oh! oh <laughs> but you make it. The rest of you go across? Uh, yeah, seeing, seeing it work, uh, I'm gonna do it, but Orem is gonna, like, get up to the edge, he's gonna, like, turn around and, like, get on his, like, hands and knees, and then go down, like, backwards, <laughs> yes, yes, on his hands and, on his, like, hands and, style, yeah, just, yeah, just, correct, just, just hopefully, just, like, yeah, so as you guys all make it across, you do so, and as you look, you peer off, and you notice that the f- mist, just for about, I'd say 30 seconds, it dwindles for a moment. And you can see further down where the bridge starts to slowly open. You notice that as you make your way this way, it starts widening. You guys have made it past this side, and you guys are making your way down. <laughs> uh, yeah, we should continue uh, on our path slowly. All right. So, Passing you guys kind of move on up a little bit to about here. As you do so, you see that there seems to be some sort of pathway that goes across. You can't see very well. The fog kind of emits and picks back up. You notice that it kind of goes wider, but you can't see. You see flooring and bridgeway kind of emit to the left and to the right, but you don't know how far. This is about all that you can see. The mist kind of swirls, swirls back in, blocking most of your view. What do you guys wish to do? This rolls in. Oh, it makes up again. I say we just slowly make our way. Is this only move forward? Because I don't think it's a right path, right? That's just the edge. Uh, yeah. Is so. Okay. You said it, it widens. Seems as if it seems to start widening out. Okay, yeah, so it's not, it's not. Yeah, it's not path, just straight, right? But we just can't see what's. Yep. Okay. You notice that you see the floor kind of skirt off. But you lose it in the mist. So you guys keep moving forward? I'd say punch. It's, it's like we're, we're walking into a room without walls. Same, yeah, there are no walls. No walls. Yeah, that is what I'm envisioning, yeah. is that it's so, essentially a room. Who's walking first? You are? Sure. Okay. So as you take the helm and you start making your way up, you make it to about right here. Who's next? Uh, I'll be third. I'll be four if you want to put more of them in between. Yeah, sure. We'll go like this. And then you can go like third. You can go fourth, my man. Maybe in the middle where Brad is. You can go here, here, and then Pug. You can throw Pug last. So, as you guys make your way through, Perrin, give me a stealth check. As you feel something underneath your feet somewhat shift, and you can tell that the atmosphere has changed as you move out farther. Uh, eight. Eight. (laughs) As you move out, you kind of step in full foot and everything. You feel your complete foot. And within the silence and the mist, you hear this loud footstep. 
as you do so, it kind of echoes out, and you can tell that this floor goes a little bit wider than you think. At that moment, you notice that right in the middle of where you stand, you see a black hole start opening. Within the floor in which you just saw, you see around it darkness. This floor in which was once there, as you walk up to it now, you see almost give way beneath you. And as you look in front of you, you just see darkness swirling around you, almost like a dark essence. As it does so, you look up and you see mustering swirling what looks to be some sort of cloud. What do you do? I'm mustering? Yeah, it seems like something possibly maybe forming or something is swirling about in this. In the hole? Um... Let's say maybe go around it either. Okay, so you want to go this way, this way? I'll try the left side, tap my foot just to see. All right, so you kind of start making your way up to here. And as you do so, Jonathan starts making his way right behind you. As the rest start doing as well, you see this hole start. And as you step next to it, you see a couple stones kick off and drop into it. And as they do, you notice that they stop. As they start floating almost in the mist. You see them then get shot back at you, you get, they spit back onto you. As you look back into it, you see this swirling dark cloud start emanating up, boiling. As it starts swirling up, you see almost like fingers and a hand start stretching, reaching out of it. You notice that it is one, and then two, and then three. And then as you look, you see just pulling out of this huge hole, swirling above you, multiple shadowy figures with huge dark bony white fingers and dark hoods that swirl around their face. You see no figure other than the shadowing just swirling around this area. As the fog emits for just a second and as you see before you the slouch poof, and as that does you can see around you for a moment. And within this you see this, the rest of this platform. You notice that it stretches out slightly and then elongates further. And from this dark hole, you see two large shadowy figures are coming out here and here. As they do so, you hear a... <laughs> so, you've decided to travel along the bridge. This cryptics pass oh, fun. and you are not welcome here as you see these two shadowy figures both speaking almost as once echoing off each other as they're speaking to you that's where we're gonna end today oh, shit. as you see them standing there the shadowy figures forming and emanating all around them that's can't have a, just a bridge full of puddles then we got it. fucking goals <laughs> Bridge full of puddles. That's right. But yeah. So we will start next week with this dude and oh, I don't even know if I got the other one. You guys will be fighting this one and the other one, and that's where hey, we hey, will hey. be starting. We don't really fight. True. You guys can tr do whatever it's you wish. It's a not cool. More than you you can give them patty cake dances and, and like Baker's Swear men. Down. Anytime we, I heard like rings. Anytime rings. we try and talk, talk our way out of this shit, shit goes south. Well, the only good hey, you talked your way out of the rocks good. encounter just a little bit ago. Yeah, because they were ninety nine percent dead. True that. The only the only <laughs> person in the party that's good at talking is the idiot. Yeah. So he'll just inadvertently fuck something but, up. But but I'm learning, you know. Well, being very persuasive. Learn things. That's right. <laughs>